ABC Sport. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2023 AFL Premiership season. On ABC Radio, ABC Sport Digital, and now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. The hottest team in footy, Port Adelaide, come to town on an 11-game winning sequence, which is a club record up against the Bombers, who are back from Perth after a 32-point loss to Fremantle last week. They're out to defend their place in the top eight, and there's a whole lot of teams coming for them in that pack outside of the top eight. This is Grandstand AFL Saturday Night Footy, a standalone fixture at the G between Essendon and Port Adelaide, a venue these two teams haven't played at against one another since 1998. One of the other big selling points tonight is Zach versus Zach. Merritt up against Butters, two of the premier midfielders in the competition and two guys that look destined for the All-Australian team. My name's Corbin Middlemass. There is a late change. Uh, Quentin Narkle holds his place in the team in the end, so there's been a whole lot of ins and outs for Port Adelaide. Junior Rioli was meant to play, withdrawn after the teams came out due to personal reasons. Josh Sin was in the side momentarily. He too has gone out. So Burgoyne is in for sin. That's the only change from the 23, the Port Adelaide team that beat Geelong back in round 14. Meanwhile, for Essendon, their as-named Dylan Shiel comes in as their Medi sub. So Shiel and Burgoyne, the two subs. Scott Lysett's just gone down the race, so we'll keep an eye on that. The doctor, though, has just come up, so hopefully just a little pit stop for Scott Lysett before play begins. Both teams are out on the ground. Jess Webster's here to call the footy with me. Good evening, Jess. G'day, Corby. Good to see you as always. Not often we get to see Port Adelaide and Essendon play at the MCG. In fact, you have to go way back to 1998 uh, was the last time these two sides played here at this venue. So a big challenge for Essendon tonight. They want to keep their place in the top eight against the juggernaut that is Port Adelaide at the moment. I want to see Essendon be really strong in the contest tonight. They've lost their contested possession count in eight of their last nine games. And to me, that's going to be key for them to win those little battles across the ground tonight if they're to get the job done. Port Adelaide don't get to play too much footy here, period. So just their third game for the season. They were really stomped out by Collingwood back in round two, lost by 71 points, and they beat Richmond by 10 a couple of weeks ago back in round 11. Our Saturday night, grandstand AFL experts, former teammates, current teammates on uh, ABC Radio as well. Luke Ball and Brendan Goddard. G'day, Ballie. Corby, good to be at the G, isn't it? Standalone, as you said, just the one game tonight. So all eyes on both of these teams. And, you know, what are we, first of July? So I sort of feel like July is a bit of that grind period, isn't it? That round 16 to 20 before we start to get a sniff of the finals. And, well, both of these teams currently... Um, sit, you know, sit inside the, the top eight, don't they? We know what Port's been doing. I, you know, I'm really keen to see how Essendon go tonight uh, against what is probably, you know, alongside Collingwood, what is certainly the litmus test in the competition at the moment. Can the Bombers win, Beach? Well, for your sake, I think, uh, I hope they do. No, and for our mate, uh, Zaki, I like how you did that intro with Zaki v Zaki. Is that your little intro and just... key matchup for tonight? Something to look forward to. And then threw his name yeah. in there to All-Australian. I think Zach two, Butters. Two of my favourite players in the league, I think it's fair okay. to say. I'm a big Zach Butters fan and, and Zach Merritt. I mean, you, you have had a whole lot to do with very, Zach. You were his mentor, good. obviously. Yeah, for taught him everything he knows. <laughs> but, I mean, this is probably the best what, 14 weeks of his career that he's yeah. played? Well, most most rounded. We've, se- yeah, we've yeah. seen his offensive ability and all that, but he's... And I remember at the uh, start of the season, well, I chatted to him in the off-season and chatted to him regularly, but he flagged publicly that he his focus in the pre-season and this year was to be the best defensive player for Essendon. And that's something that's really come to fruition. He's always had that in his game, mind you. That's what I loved about him as a young kid playing half forward his first couple of years. He's ability to run and chase and pressure. But, uh, yeah, he's having an outstanding season. So looking forward to Port Adelaide. haven't seen them in person for a while. And Essendon uh, looking at, can Port Adelaide buck the trend of having the buy? And Bulldogs were the first to do it today against Fremantle at Marvel. Dual All-Australian Carlton captain Karen Peterson is with us on the boundary. Good evening, Kez. G'day, Corby. It's great to be down here at ground level for a couple of reasons, being at the MCG, but also because currently it's not raining, and if the radar's anything to be believed, hopefully that will stay away. Zach Merritt went into the middle. He's won the toss for his team. They're going to be kicking to the city end. And Dylan Shield, just as you uh, said before, the sub for Essendon, and Jace Burgoyne, the sub for Port Adelaide. Played each other already this year, year Corb. Not that yep. long ago either, really, too. Round eight, so you know, two, two or so months ago. And uh, they did a pretty good job that day, the Bombers. Certainly had less scoring shots, but 
Port only just got over the line late by five points, so hopefully they'll take a bit of confidence out of that. Scott Lice had a long bathroom break, mate, with, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him. So it disappeared down the race after the teams have come in. Let's go. Saturday night, the Dons and a power. You're with Jess Webster. Then lacing into the ruck for Port Adelaide. Phillips won the tap for Essendon. Down to Stringer. A wobbly kick off the boot. Tumbles it towards half forward. Getting the hand pass away is Perkins. 50-50 uh, ball inside 50. And it is Burton who wins it for Port. Gives it to Houston. A long kick to the outer side. Is that a free kick uh, going McEntee's way? It is. Ridley just got into his back. So a free kick to McIndy, centre wing, southern side. Gives it off to Bonner. Chips it forward to Burn Jones, who's marked between wing and half forward on the outer side. Keen to move it along, but he got caught. Just got the hand pass away to Bonner. His hand pass deflected by Merritt over the boundary line for a throw in on the southern wing. it would be a big moment in the game if they lose Lysett before the bounce. Jordan. Yeah, really big. Uh, we know that Sammy Draper's not out there, but I like Andrew Phillips when he's one out in the ruck beach. I think he likes the responsibility too. So he'll be licking his lips if he's got Jeremy Finlayson for the day. Karen, Pe Karen Peterson on the boundary? Yeah, he did go down about two or three minutes before the bounce. He certainly didn't look into stress or anything like that, but I am watching. There's a lot of activity between the doctors and the, the physio running back and forth. So bear with me. Keep him, uh, keep him in mind. I'll come back to you. Thanks, Kez. Well do as Butters from the stoppage kicks inside 50 for Port Adelaide. And two touches there. Redmond in the box seat dragged off, and he's going to get a free. And Redmond to take it for the Don. So they're all in the black, as you'd expect. Home game, black shorts, red sash. And Port Adelaide predominantly in their, predominantly in white in their clash strip with the teal and black V on the jumper. Long kick up to the wing. There's a mark taken by Farrell, the left footer, with the intercept mark for Port Adelaide. So can bang it back inside 50. Punt road end of the ground. Deep entry. Dixon down there. Martin gets across, tries to spoil. Butters in the goal square. Dragged off it. Rosie socks it in the back of the net. For the first of the night, he's claiming it. The Bombers believe it was touched. We'll get a conference, but it looks as if Rosie has kicked the first of the night. And only a conclusive touch will overrule this with the soft signal coming back as a goal for Rosie. Yep, just the uh, the two young stars for Port on the spot there. Redmond did well, didn't he, just to, to buffer Butters off the ball, but Rosie good enough to pounce on that. And it doesn't look like there's too much... Opposition from the Bombers defenders, so looks like it'll be yeah. the first of the game. To or the is it post? Star. Yeah, so they're checking that. Oh, okay, right yeah, hand yeah, goal post, post as well. But it was actually Butters actually didn't move. He, he stopped the switch on Martin on the far side, and the ball came out because of the quick turnover. He was played it smart. He just stood at the top of the goal square and made Martin defend. Who he was third man up, so he's nude when he hit the ground. Here we go. We're getting flat lines on the Snicko. <laughs> from the small portion of the Port Adelaide fans behind the goals at the city end. So this will be four points and a goal for Connor Rosie. He's taken a while, isn't it? It certainly is. Some players are setting up. What are they doing? No confidence in the snicker. <laughs> I was going to say, they're all set up for a behind, but Ruckman are back in the centre, the centre circle. You might be looking at, did it deflect off Redmond's leg? Oh, no, come on. Can't see that. It's a foot. There we go. Confirmation. Four points. First score of the night is a goal to Connor Rosie. And after a long delay in a video review, the umpire finally signals a goal. Port Adelaide with the first. One straight six. Essendon yet to score. Three and a half minutes gone on Grandstand AFL. Uh, Luke Ball and Brendan Goddard. Well, as a repeat entry, was, and that's what they've been doing so well, Port. Winning clearance, winning contested footy, getting the ball forward, and then setting up so well and trapping the ball in their front half. And it was Kane Farrell that took the intercept mark. He's having a really good year. The unsung heroes of this Port resurgence, pumping the ball back to the top of the square, as you said. But as he's a really smart player for all his toughness and skill. Really smart player. If it wasn't him, it was Connor Rosie onto the loose ball. Good start, Port. 11th goal for the season for Connor Rosie, playing game number 100 in a few weeks. Gee, there's a bit of movement down there on the uh, the Port Adelaide bench. Uh, and Karen Peterson's down there, Kez. It is all happening down here, Corby. The AFL officials are running around with paperwork crazy. And I've just seen uh, Dante Vistiani. I'm sure I've got that name Vistiani, wrong, but he's just, yeah. Yeah, he's just come up onto... Uh, onto the bench in full kit, ready to go. So Scott Lysette out of the game, no idea why. Uh, and Vincentini is on the bench, ready to go. Wow. 
Well, Port Adelaide move the uh, win the clearance rather and find Houston at right half forward. So because Slicet went off the ground before the first yeah, bounce, a, yeah. does that mean that they can then bring in essentially an extra player and they don't have to Must be. use their yeah. start because yeah. well, it's injured in if, the warm-up. Was, yes, injured okay. in the warm-up. So yeah, it was literally two minutes prior to the bounce. Houston wants to dish it off to Dixon on the lead, off hands. Butters is lurking. Wanted high contact free, didn't get it. Horn Francis picks it up. He's locked up by a couple of bombers and we've got a stoppage 40 out from the port goal. I love Zach Butters as much as you. Just, he just plays for free kicks every now and then a little bit too much for mine. Love everything else about him, but just one thing that I'd love to see him get out of his game. From the ball up, McGrath picks it up. He's tackled by Drew, brought to ground. We'll have another stoppage. So Vizzatini, he's a Xavier College old Zach lad. boy, yep. Uh, Fourth round pick, 2021. This is his first game. Amazing. So as a 20-year-old, what a way to make it Quick jump in the car. (laughs) In AFL footy. So late in for Lysett, super late minutes before the opening bounce. And Dante Vizzatini is on debut, putting his socks on on the interchange. (laughs) (laughs) But he was ready to either go sit in the stand or go visit his parents. Like like local footy almost. Yeah, he was almost, yeah, ready to pop into a pie, wasn't he? In the stand, but... (laughs) It might be the worst thing for the kid. You don't know. Don't know. Not knowing him. Just, righto, son. You've got two minutes to prepare to think about your first game. Out you go. Pow Pepper from outside 50 unloads Goldwood. Hits the post. So, as Bill Laurie would say, it's all happening at the MCG. Port Adelaide 1-1. Essendon yet to score. Six minutes in. Karen Peterson. I don't know how the mindset of this kid is, but they are down here strapping his ankle, his thumb. <laughs> They're chucking his GPS on. There is instructions coming left, right and centre. This guy, look, going to see what he's made of tonight, that's for sure. The 20-year-old from Brighton, Dante Visitini, comes in for his first game right before the first bounce. Meanwhile, the Bombers from the kick-in kick it to the wing, but it's coming back. Dixon got a hand pass over his head, straight down to Perkins of Essendon. He gets boot to ball, not 15. Butters head over it, and Perkins wraps him up at left half forward for the power. He's got a younger brother, too, who's going to figure prominently up the top of the draft this year, I think. Vigo, Vizantini, but all eyes on. Phillips palms it down straight to Horn Francis. Tackle, but got the hand pass away. There's no whistle on play. Bombers fans wanted holding the ball. Meanwhile, ball's locked up in the centre square. It's going to be the hands on the footy here, the Bombers. It's all poured at the moment. Front half game. Yep. Seven-point lead for Port Adelaide from the stoppage. Caldwell hand pass to Merritt. Handball out in front of Parrish. Gets a hand pass away as he's been tackled, but it's a turnover. Farrell for Port. Hand pass to Drew. Has a fumble. Gets it away to Butters. Loops the hand pass back to Drew. 70 out. Kicks inside 50. Dixon. Strong hands. He marks out wide at left half forward. 48 from goal. And then the pressure's really good too when Essendon do win it. Port Adelaide force him into high handball just around that stoppage congestion causing the turnover. And then off a quick turnover through the midfield. They look dangerous when they go forward with little numbers ahead of the ball. Dixon from the 50-metre arc puts his oh. foot through it. He has whacked that straight through for a goal. Port building an early lead. 2-1-13. Essendon yet to score. Eight minutes into the game. The Bombers have barely been in their front half. Drama on the interchange. Scott Lysett injured in the warm-up. He came off seconds before the start of the game. And Dante Vizzatini is on debut. The 20-year-old who's having his ankles strapped in the dugout at the moment. About to step on the ground. Uh, you'd think some stage later in this quarter for his first minutes in AFL footy. So what a start to the night. Brennan Goddard, Luke Ball. Had a, had a solid year, hasn't he, Charlie Dixon? We know that he's always seemed to be uh, battling under some sort of physical ailment. ailment but he, he, he should be... You know, looking, looking at this Bombers, and as you look now, look at the size difference. Jaden Laverde is a 6'2", 6'3", absolute best speech. He's, uh, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of height advantage and size advantage there. So, And across the board too, Todd Marshall. So that's a potential strength for the power tonight. From the restart, Caldwell hand pass missed Phillips, picked up by Hobbs, gives it to Merritt who had a fumble. Two off the deck from Drew towards half forward. Powell Pepper overran it. Out the back is Durham for the Bombers. His kick is picked off by Narkel. He gives it to Wines. Back to Narkel. Sweeping hand pass to Williams on the members' wing. Gets the kick away. It's a high ball towards half forward. In best position is Jake Kelly for Essendon. Takes the mark at half back. Bombers yet to score the port. A couple of goals nine minutes into the first. The kick heads down the members' wing. Hands to it from Wiedemann, who's got the shin guard on tonight, so we might see him in the ruck at stages. Spills through to Houston, though, at Port Adelaide. Again, Port win it back. Head pass to Aaliyah, away to Williams. Kicks down the wing, and Butters has got it again. Marks plays on, kicks inside 50. Marshall marks. 
Left half forward, and Port Adelaide are all over Essendon here in the first 10. Seven inside 50s to one. Front half game, we spoke about. Farrell involved again. Williams is a, another emerging player. They've become the best kicking team in the comp, this Port Adelaide team. And it's a lot of those left footers across half back that set them up. Zach Butters involved again. He's off to a bit of a fly, three possessions early. And an easy, uncontested mark, Todd Marshall. Similar spot where Dixon gold moments ago as Marshall hooks his kick out to the left to behind. 2-2 to yet to score. It's all Port Adelaide. They've got the first 14 points of the game through 10 minutes. Almost seems like Essendon are the ones who's rattled despite the late change to the starting side for Port Adelaide. So from the kick in, Redmond runs his full measure, then bombs it towards the members' wing. Weedham in the, in the pack against Aaliyah, who brought it to ground. Roach by Guelph, he gets the hand pass out to right. He hand passes to space. Port Adelaide in best position through Burton, who collects, but he was run down by Menzi. Holding the ball is the call. So Essendon, one inside 50 against seven for Port. They haven't seen a lot of booty, uh, a lot of footy in their front half, rather, as Menzi kicks to Martin, who then kicks it back to Menzi, still on centre wing, members' side. This time, he winds up and sends it to a big pack inside 50. Ali got hands to it, couldn't complete the mark. Rode by Durham of Essendon, gives it to Hobbs. His kick smothered. Ricochets to Power Pepper, who now Houston, it gets boot to ball, but he's turned it over. Mark is taken on the outer side from Laverde. And he's got it 50 out from goal, left half forward. He's fancy Just chances his from here, yeah. Reggie know him pretty well. You would have seen him have a crack Border at line. these. Borderline, Early yeah. in the game, so it's his best chance. Less fatigue. Drafted as a forward originally. 37 goals in his career. None yet this season for Jaden Laverty. On his approach now from 55. Gives it a feral whack towards goal. And the Bombers are on the board. But Adelaide 2 2 14, Essendon 1 straight 6, 12 minutes played opening term on Grants and AFL. Well, it was the first opportunity where they, but again, what was evident is just Port Adelaide's ability to cause pressure, and even from a contested situation, it looked like Bombers were going to get out by hands, and this that frontal pressure from Port Adelaide causing a mistake, but they managed to clean it up. Uh, some great chase from behind from Menzi, wasn't it, that caused the turnover to just get it back in there, deep inside 50. Which gives them the ability and then to set up behind the ball, which is really evident then with a rush kick. Pressure on the ball inside 50. Pressure on Dan Houston, which just had to dump it outside 50. And Jaden Laverde was set up really strong on the open side of the ground. And a really good finish. Is that borderline. Just did enough. That's all you need. Well, he used a stand rule, didn't he? It yep. was one of those crazy ones again where... Well, the umpire actually can't... He's, it's, it's, it's a weird one, right? Sorry, Kate. But he's standing side on. So if he yeah. stands behind the guy on the mark, he knows when he walks off yeah, the line. Yeah. So he, he, he walked a different line to, to Quinton Narkel, who was standing on the mark. Yeah. And, and you know, cribbed an extra five metres, which was the difference in the end. So smart play. Jai Caldwell just hits the bench. 666 six, six rule. With, uh, with the blood rule. Blood so rule. Uh, allows Stringer to come in 10 to centre bounce. Even in the cool condition speech, the ball still travelled reasonably far. Your theory about the cool nights and ball doesn't go as far. Yeah, yeah. Golf balls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harry. Brisbane. Did you watch Brisbane game the other night? It was travelling further. Hurried kick for Port out of the middle. Pal Pepper off the square. Comes, collects. Hand pass goes away to Rosie. Runs back onto his right boot. Kicks the centre half forward. Uh, Marshall crashes the pack. Spills down to Martin. Had the blinkers on. Caught by Charlie Dixon. And Martin trying to rebound off the back flank. Dixon came and got him. And he'll have a look at them here. A centre half forward. He'll kick from just outside 50. I mentioned he's had just a solid year, but... One thing he has done, he does do, he, he does a lot of that grunt work really well. I know that's what really pleases the coaching staff. And Ken's always very very quick to defend Charlie Dixon. It's not all about numbers, it's presence, it's pressure, making his teammates stand tall. Charlie Dixon has kicked one already. This kick fades out to the right and the behind. Minor score, Port Adelaide lead it, 2-3 over Essendon, one straight. There was an extremely late change, Lyson injured in the warm-up, so Dante Fizzatini is in to make his debut, having his ankle strapped on the bench. Almost from the kick in Laverde, close to the boundary line, kicks down the wing. The mark taken by Perkins. He's got it in front of the interchange gates. Kick short to Martin. 
Now he wants Ooh. to use the corridor. That's a dangerous kick. Finlayson could have marked it instead. Tapped it down to Narkel, who's caught in a tackle by McGrath. Got the hand pass away, but it's a turnover. Perkins looking for Hogs. Free kick, whistle on play. It's a high contact going the way of Ollie Wines, who's got the ball adjacent to the centre circles in the middle and wants to take off. He has a player free at left half forward in Drew, who marks and decides to just hold it up. So you see Dante Vicentini on the boundary line just doing a warm-up with the physios. He's a tall. I didn't know he's a tall. 202 yeah, centimetres. 202. He's a rough man. As Drew kicks in board to Williams, who now will try and find a target inside 50. Dixon caught in a wrestle, gets out the back. Martin for the Bombers, gives it to Liberti. Last line of defence. Hand passes over the top to Parrish, who has some room to move in the back pocket. Parrish off the back flank. Hand pass away to Ridley. Out of the defensive arc. Short kick along the boundary line. Finds Wiedemann. Looks inboard for Essendon. Back to Parrish. Back edge of the centre square. Always great drama. A bit of a late change. and Someone not expecting to play all of a sudden out there on the G. And the big time at AFL level. Kicks inboard to Phillips. Hands it off to Heppel. Short kick finds Stringer. Turns, dumps it inside. Forward 50. Picked off. Burton for Port Adelaide. Hand pass away to Aaliyah. And Aaliyah's just going to go with a short kick to centre half back for McKenzie. Sort of reminds me of Brendan Goddard in Ireland all those years ago, Beach. Just not expecting to play. And all of a sudden, <laughs> late call up. And there you are. Long story, mate. Uh... <laughs> Wait, maybe the only one. difference is I had a really uh, late or <laughs> early, early start the, the night before. Might be one for quarter time. Port Adelaide work at the half forward. Dixon takes a contested mark, chips it inboard, looking for Finlayson. Is that a free oh. kick? It is. Well, Darcy Parrish not happy with the umpire. Oh. Jeremy Finlayson to line up for a shot at goal, 45 out slide angle to the right. Careful not to give away well, 50, just... the set 50, but. I was just about to pump him up for a minute of yeah. getting back in the hole in front of the key forward. He did. I mean, the umpire, the cue was that he took his eyes off it at the last minute, didn't he? But he didn't make enough of an impact for mine on the contest. Well, he's to, a free kick. In my opinion, he's allowed to protect himself when he knows. It's just the eyes. is not coming the other way, arguably, it's an uncontested mark to himself. The eyes were the giveaway, though. Averaging nearly two and a half goals a game, Jeremy Finlayson this season from 45... Pushes it away to the left. Port Adelaide 2 4 16. The Bombers 1 straight 6. 17 minutes played opening term on Grandson AFL. So the sub still untouched. That's Chase Burgoyne for Port Adelaide and Dylan Shield is the sub for Essendon. As McGrath out of the goal square drives his kick up to the wing. Big pack mark, Dylan Williams. And number 23 leaping over the top to take the intercept for Port Adelaide. Goes back to Finlayson. Carrying the ruck momentarily. Short kick, trying to link up. In the centre square with Rosie. Got some front on contact from Guelphie and a free kick for Port. Don's fans aren't too happy with that. Clear, cool night at the G. As Rosie goes deep inside the forward 50, they come from all directions and standing at the back. Ridley takes the intercept mark for Essendon. The power by 10, 18 minutes in. Chip short to Hairpool. Bombers fans want 50 as Powell Pepper crashed into his back. Umpire says nothing there. Oh. Short kick to Parrish. He's turned it over in the middle of the ground. Burton takes the intercepting mark for the power from the centre square. Bombs it long to full forward. Looking for Dixon. Reels in the grab. In the pocket, he's going to line up for Port's third. It's just a fine line for Essendon. Just to, that argument the kick was on. He just missed the target, put it over his head. But you find that mark and then opens up the whole ground essentially exposes Port Adelaide's defence. But that's a risky take. Lining up for a snap around the corner. Keeps it low. Doesn't make the distance. It's rushed through for a minor score. Port Adelaide 2 5 17. The Bombers 1 straight 6. 19 played first term. Karen Peterson on the boundary. Dante Visitini, after all that drama of the, the fourth bounce, really, he's coming to the game. Reassuring words from Travis Boak and from Ken Hinckley. No warm-up, no jumper presentation. Let's see how he goes. That's excellent. <laughs> what a way to start in jumper number 38. He's going to be put to the test, too. He's run straight down to fullback on Peter Wright. So we'll see if the Bombers can, uh, can give him an early test in his first game. Don's working down the southern wing. Zach Merritt took the kick out. Now he's involved again in the chain. Mark's... Against the boundary line, southern side. Missed that one, but he's looking dangerous, Charlie Dixon, isn't he? Oh, I think they're probably going to have to look at that matchup at some stage. And, and maybe Zerk Thatcher just with a little bit more size on Laverde. Merritt short kick to Heppel. The former skipper down to half forward. Turned it over. Farrell takes the intercept mark. 
Caught by 11. Now the counter attack into the centre square for Marshall. Plenty of white jumpers Ball rushing out. forward. Kicks out to McEntee. Mark centre half forward. Dixon's one out in the cage. He's going to go long in that direction. Task for Laverne. Dixon hands to it. No mark. Spills down to Pow Pepper. Hand pass back to Dixon. Forward pocket. Runs in the wrong direction. Kicks to centre half forward. Turnover. Hobbs has got it. Got a hand pass out to McGrath. He gives it to Zerk Thatcher. His hand pass a little hot for Parrish. Picked up by Farrell. His hand pass goes over the head of the first game room, Vicentini. Now the Bombers might come up with it on the wing, although Merritt's turned it over. A chance now for Houston. Kicks across the centre square to Bonner, who marks on the members' wing. Port Adelaide by 11 as we tick into time, one of the opening quarter. Bonner, low spearing ball, looking for Pau Pepper. Getting in hand in there is Lavertia. Spills down to Narkoli, chips it forward to Pau Pepper. There's a push in the back. It's going Port Adelaide's way to Sam Pau Pepper, right on the 50 metre line at left half forward. Took the mark anyway, so he'll, uh, he'll line up. But again, just that that wall across the middle of the ground, Berger. And, and part of it has been certainly the pressure from Port, but also just some some sloppy skill errors. Yeah, from, from I, think, I think the pressure's come first, and then maybe it's a bit of that perceived pressure ball now that they feel like they're under pressure every time they get the ball because it was so good early. Runs on the arc, Powell Pepper, and then fires towards goal. Is it coming back? It's touched right on the line. For another minor score to the power. 2 6 18 plays Essendon, one straight six. 21 played opening term, Grandson AFL. Game certainly on Port's terms. Are 15 inside 50s to four. So you speak about the Dixon matchup. Certainly Peter Wright's got a size matchup as well on a Lear, but they can't get it down to him. Eight scoring shots to one. Port by 12 points. Ridley drives his kick up to the wing, butters at the drop. Gets a hand pass out for Port to Houston. Handball away to Power Pepper. Hand pass to Williams. Faints to kick and now decides to go longer. Looking for Dixon again. He's forced to spoil from the back. Handball puts his head over it. Wins it for Essendon. Hand pass to Merritt. Sharp hand pass. Slipped through Perkins. Parrish tidies it up. Gives it back to Merritt. Handball to Handball and a hand pass out wide to Laverty. Links up with Martin, goes back by hand to McGrath, and he can kick eventually out of a defensive 50. Peter Wright's the target, has a couple to beat, it gets out the back. Port Adelaide had the numbers through Williams, who can gather hand passes inboard to Boak, who has a fumble. Now Vicentini, the first game of collects, but he's stripped to the footy. Umpire says not holding the ball. Picked up by Wines, who gives it to Finlayson. Hand passes to Bergman, centre wing member side, chip short to Rosie, who's got it in front of the interchange gates. Do you know if the Vicentinis have... Jumped in the car and made their way in. Yes. <laughs> cool. Check in a quarter time. Here's a Victorian out of Brighton. Yeah, Bright, yeah yep. about, oh, about 25, 28 minutes from, from Brighton Beach. <laughs> yeah, it's just where, where you hail from as well. Where you, where you <laughs> hail from short to Drew yeah. inside 50. Sorry, boys. There's, there's another mark taken inside 50 to Williams. You can line up for another shot at goal to Port. Well, I think the most concerning thing for Essen is when they're Port Ben doing, Jones, in fact. Port, don't get me wrong, doing a great job to apply enough pressure in their forward 50 at Essen and dump the ball, but they cannot win a contest, particularly on this side of the wing, which is where a lot of the play has been in front of the interchange. They've got to either hard the contest, get out of bounds, yeah. or they've actually just got to get better representation on ground level because Port Adelaide are doing such a good job on either marking it, or when it does hit the ground, they're winning it and it's coming straight back in and putting the Essen defence under pressure. Darcy Byrne Jones from 45. He's pushed that one to the right. So it's another behind to Port Adelaide. 2 7 19 plays one straight six. 23 played first term. Uh, the news from Port Adelaide it, uh, it's a tweaked knee, is what Port are saying. So Lysett tweaked his knee in the warm up. So that's why Dante Vezzettini has been basically pulled out of the crowd to make his debut tonight. The 20 year old. It was a travelling emergency. There's a 50 metre penalty here as Finlayson and Coaches on the mark after Merritt took the kick out. Goes long to half forward. Good transition for the Bombers and Redmond marks on the 50. And his range is unlimited. Yeah, he's certainly got the journey here. Beautiful kick from Merritt. Just let him off the hook there, the 50 metre penalty from the kick in. It was Jeremy Finlayson, so... Which is wouldn't, wouldn't be a bit disappointing from Port Adelaide's point of view if he goes back and kicks this. Oh, yeah. And he'll get the crowd up and going. But the dominant supporter had two goals, seven. And we just talked about it, 17 inside 50s. And this will be Essendon's fifth for the quarter. So from one kick, it ends up in the hands of Mason Redmond. Outside the 50, kicks from 52, he's off line, it's out the left, it's a behind. Port have kicked plenty of those at the other end. Essendon 1-1, Port Adelaide inaccurate, 2-7. Powered by 12 points, should be a whole lot more time on in the opening quarter. Well, they've got to snap into defence here, the Bombers. They've got to try and keep play, play a bit of territory and keep the ball in their front half, give their defenders a breather. Williams from the kick in. 
Runs into the pocket, then kicks long down the line. Redmond in best position and takes the grab. Two kicks from goal. Member's side kicks into the pocket. It's over the head of Durham. Out the back is Williams support close to the line. And they've kept it in. Langford received from Menzi. Hooks the kick towards the goal square. Can they get a mark? Wiedemann got hands to it. Couldn't come down with it. Ball alive in the pocket. Wines goes to ground. Is that holding the ball? The umpire circling. Yes. Free kick to the Bombers. To the pleasure of the Don's faithful in the stands here tonight at the MCG. Jakey Schreiner wanted it, didn't he? Matt <laughs> Golfi is going to take the free kick. So he's tight angle in the pocket. He's only 15 metres or so out from goal. So he'll snap around the corner to get the Bombers going. And he gets it through. The lead's cut to six. Port Adelaide, 2-7-19 to Essendon, 2-1-13. 25 played. First term Grandson AFL with Ball and Brennan got out yeah. under experts. Yeah, well, the Bombers will be pretty happy right now. Just under two minutes to go, but considering the dominance, as I made mention, just prior to that free kick of Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide in this quarter, they've done a really good job just to be within a kick. It's at nine, scoring shots of three. And it's good to see the Bombers return the favour in terms of set up well from the kick in as Bully highlighted how they needed to and then get a turnover from Redmond, just get it back inside 50 and get it back to a dangerous spot, top of the goal square from Langford. Just to be able to lock the ball in the full half. Quite often it's not the first one you score from, it's that re-entry where you're able to win the ball off turnover like they did from a kick in and get it to a dangerous spot in the ground. Crooked bounce. Forwards get the work. Crooked bounce back in the middle and Visitini got his first touch of the footy. It was a hit out and it won't count. We'll have a recalled bounce. Dante Visitini, a 20-year-old on debut. He leaps up opposed to Phillips. They ruck share it, comes down to Wines. Hurried kick forward for Port Adelaide. Hand on it from Burn Jones. No mark spills to Heppel. He's mowed down. Dispossessed. Burn Jones hands it to Pal Pepper. He kicks it goalward. Rather than kicking it in the air where there's relatively few players, he kicked it at about knee height to Zerk Thatcher who took the intercept mark. He goes short to Kelly. Kelly to Merritt, now to Parrish in the short kicking game for the Bombers. Finds Caldwell at half back. He chips it short to Snelling, who's marked in front of the interchange gates. Port by six as we count down towards quarter time. Snelling pick it long to a pack at half forward. Great grab standing in front by Durham. Can wheel around and look for Stringer in the pocket. Use the body well against Burton and takes the mark close to the boundary line. 45 out from goal, about five in from the boundary. And start his approach from outside the field of play. Some nice precision kicking from the Bombers, wasn't it? And that's certainly uh, one way that you have to approach this a pretty well organised Port Adelaide team defence. Change the angles, punch the kicks nice and low, don't give the Aliers a chance to come off and intercept. This will take his best effort, Jake Stringer. Ooh. Almost. Misses to the right-hand side. So Port by 5, 2719 to Essendon, 2214. Crazy to think it, that goes half a metre on the inside of the post. We've got an even ball game. Given how much Port Adelaide dominated the first part of this term, really the first 20 minutes, 2-7 to 2-2. Port by 5, 28 gone. Opening quarter. Burton marks the kick out. Now goes long straight up the corridor. Merritt underneath it. Oh, almost hit him on the way down. He uh, controls the footy, gives it to Hobbs. Hand pass to Heppel. Hooks a kick down to half forward for the Bombers. Wiedemann caught at the back and bounces all the way through to Menzi. Sharp hands to Guelphie. Tackled, lost it. Came to Langford. He shoots goalward. He's kicked it. But the kick came after the bell. And had that counted, the Bombers were back in front. What a crazy quarter of footy. We saw wild inaccuracy last night on Friday night. And Port Adelaide have started wayward in front of the sticks tonight. 2-7. They lead Essendon 2-2. Port Adelaide dominating the quarter, but leading by just five points. Then a heap of drama before the ball was bounced. Scott Lysett tweaked his knee in the warm-up, so he was an extremely late out. And Dante Visitini, the 20-year-old, fourth-round pick back in 2021, 202 centimetres out of Xavier College, made his debut. So he's on the ground, walking to the huddle to join Ken Inkley and the rest of the Port Adelaide team at quarter time. Wasn't initially uh, in the scheduled lineup. He's the travelling emergency, and he gets an extremely late call up to make his debut at the G tonight. Earlier today, AFL action Saturday of round 16. 
Collingwood absolutely pumped Gold Coast. It was 78 points in the end, so a 13-goal win for the Pies. The Dogs beat Fremantle by 29 and Adelaide by 11 goals over North Melbourne. The thoughts of Luke Ball and Brendan Goddard in just a moment on ABC Radio and Sport Digital. You're listening to Grandstand AFL. Tropical North Queensland hides a dark chapter in our history. A lot of Italian migrants, this was the land of opportunity. Anthony LaPaglia is on a personal journey to unearth the extraordinary truth. This is a story of a gang that terrorised the cane fields of North Queensland for over a decade. And the mystery of a community fighting back. He would check under his car every day for bombs. The Black Hand starts Tuesday night, June 27 on ABC TV and streaming on ABC iView. Grandstand AFL. AFL. Now streaming every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. So bang it back inside 50. Punt road end of the ground. Deep entry. Dixon down there. Martin gets across. Tries to spoil. Butters in the goal square. Drag off it. Rosie socks it in the back of the net. It is all happening down here, Corby. The AFL officials are running around with paperwork. Scott Lysett out of the game. Uh, and Vincentini is on the bench ready to go. Fourth round pick 2021. This is his first game. He's putting his socks on on the interchange. <laughs> <laughs> but they are down here strapping his ankle, his thumb, they're chucking his GPS on. Reassuring words from Travis Boak and from Ken Hinckley. No warm-up, no jumper presentation. Let's see how he goes. Loops the hand pass back to Drew. 70 out, kicks inside 50. Dixon, strong hands. From the 50 metre arc, puts his foot through it. He has whacked that straight through for a goal. Port building an early lead. Now Houston, it gets through to four, but he's turned it over. Mark is taken on the outer side from Laverde from 55. Gives it a fair old whack towards goal. And the Bombers are on the board. Ball alive in the pocket. Wines goes to ground. Is that holding the ball? The umpire circling. Yes. Free kick to the Bombers. That goal kick is going to take the free kick. Snap around the corner to get the Bombers going. The 2023 AFL season. On radio. ABC Sport Digital. And now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Sounds the opening turn, Port Adelaide by five points, literally five behinds is their lead. It's 2-7 to 2-2, standalone Saturday night fixture in round 16. Corbin Middlemass, Jess Webster, Karen Peterson on the boundary, Brendan Goddard and Luke Ball. I mentioned during that quarter, Beach, about the time that uh, you had a very late call up. I thought we were going to dissect the game just quickly and then we can have longer for the story, <laughs> mate. Just, do you want to do it that way? Yeah, I, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, you came basically out of nowhere to play for Australia. But tell us about the game first. and We'll, <laughs> well the game was yeah, completely dominated by Port Adelaide, wasn't it? The, the time in forward half, which I don't have that stat, but I can tell you right now, was uh, heavily in favour of Port Adelaide. Had 18 inside 50s to eight. And then it was hard to fathom that uh, if they, uh, Essendon had kicked that last goal with Jake Stringer, that the, they'd go in at quarter time even on the scoreboard. So disappointing in a sense, but they'll be happy with the way the game's played. And Essendon just struggled. One, to get their ball movement going, but just to get it when they had to force in the long kick down the line. They just could not get a contest, so continually getting out, Mark. When the ball hit the ground, Port won it, brought it back inside, got it open side, which, as you know, Ballie gets the ball in the most space for the forwards, and they look really dangerous. So they had 18 inside 50, as I said, and they had uh, nine scoring shots, so they're going at 50%. And, and left a few out there, too. And, and Cal Pepper few, didn't yep. score at all, you know, from, from 18 metres out, so... Yeah, they'll be disappointed by that. It's a great point. You could sense it. I mean, Port's pressure was great, and, and it often happens. Bomb, the Bombers forced the Bombers to overcommit numbers at the ball to try and absorb that pressure. Yeah. And then when they got the with the outlet kick, they were kicking to an outnumber, you know, across the wing. And, you know, as, as, as good at, as Peter Wright can be aerially when he's competing three or four down, I mean, that's just the game on Port's terms, as we know. Yeah. And we saw Farrell a couple of times. You saw Williams take some intercept marks. Uh, and, uh, and then the comp... And then the compound, the issue then, when Essendon did win it and got the ball in motion, they turned it over a number of times, uh, number of times by foot, particularly in the corridor. And we know how hard that is to defend when you turn it over quickly in the corridor and how much space opposition do have then fall to the ball. And little numbers, mind you, that's the most uh, um, dangerous thing about it. Uh, and then just the fumbles and the miss handballs. It may mention Port's pressure was so good early I think it just became a, a perception thing there the perceived pressure that they felt like they were under every time they touched it it was a credit to Port Adelaide and the way they approached that first quarter having said all that I mean if you're a Bombers coach or a supporter yeah, yeah, yeah so much upside we can we can we can perform so much better around clearance and and, and let's let's try and capitalize now on on this you know youngster on Lysette not being out there and, and this youngster in his first game 
try and get on top around the clearance and, and almost reverse that trend. So let's get the ball forward and start to play some well, territory play the, uh, for yeah, us. Territory yeah, that's right. Lock it in their forward And half. we know that when we do that, we can score. So... Um, you know, they, they let them off the hook, no doubt about it, in that first quarter, Port Adelaide. I mentioned pit stop earlier when I was talking about Scott Lysett, that What Dante Visitini did is the AFL version of a pit stop, where all of a sudden he comes out as the fresh <laughs> player, he's got a bloke sc- strapping his ankles, he's got someone putting a GPS down the back of his jumper, and everybody working on him at the same time to get him basically straight out of the, the rooms to make his debut Good tonight for 20 year old. Sort of a Hollywood-style name for Agreed. Dante Visitini. Yeah, everyone lo- enjoys saying that. Corbin said it 15 times already. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he hasn't touched the footy yet. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I think he's had one handball so far. Uh, we'll get your story at halftime, Beach. Needs yeah, a yeah more time. It's, it's, it's worth it. Trust me. It's worth sticking around for that. Port Adelaide by five points. Second term underway. Visitini's out there, but he's outpointed in the ruck. Phillips wins it down. Drew gets the clearance for Port. Kicks it deep forward. Oh, gee, Ridley hit the ground hard. Flying over the back of the pack. He got pushed. I heard that from him. Yeah, dangerous landing, but he's okay. So he'll get up and take the kick. Jordan Ridley. The defensive 50 for Essendon. He goes long to a contest on the wing. Phillips running out after it. No mark. Taken high in that contest. Is Peter Wright? He's going to get a kick for his first one tonight. Goalless last week. With Alex Pierce doing the job on him, the Fremantle captain. He's got it on the wing here for the Bombers. Kick up towards half forward. Bergman playing in front. Can't complete the mark. Any numbers around the footy. Now it spills to Houston, who gives it to Butters, streaming through the middle of the MCG. Hand pass over the head of Drew. Zerk Thatcher out the back for the Bombers. His hand pass misses McGrath, kicks off the deck. Parrish had a fumble, and it's through the legs of Hobbs. McGrath chasing after it. He tries to tow it off the deck, only as far as Butters. He's had another fumble, but has time to regather from left half back. Flares the kick out wide and finds Rosie, gives it off to Bonner from the outer wing. Kicks to... Burn Jones at half forward. Redmond in the contest brought it to ground. Finn Layson close to the line. Happy to head over the line for a throw in at left half forward. Port Adelaide into attack. They lead by five points early stages, second term. I've already oh. seen, uh, sorry, Phillips, a bit of a tactical change for Essendon. I think the message has been get to those contests when we're forcing the long kick every opportunity because Peter Wright often outnumbers, you said, with tools at his opponents doing a good job to stop him from marking the footy. Rucks miss it from the boundary throw-in. Spills through to Parrish of the Bombers. Hand pass back inboard. Knocked down by Drew to Bonner's advantage. Or gave it to Bergman. Stolen away by Merritt. Wax it forward for Essendon. Up over halfway. Menzi has a fumble. Then tackles Burton. Ball comes out in the tackle. Um, says play on. Bergman mops it up. Hand pass to Williams for Port. Handball out wide for Butters who goes tearing away on that southern wing. Now looks at Phillips. Wants to go around him. Short kick. Uh, Rosie touched it on the way through. Spills to Marshall, though, with the power. Hand pass back to Rosie. He's tackled. Got it out off the ground. Still a uh, greasy sort of footy in the middle of the G, and Williams picks it up, kicks wide to Butters again. Southern wing for Paul. He can mark and take off. Sweeping hand pass over the top to Rosie from 50 out. Kick smothered by Zerk Thatcher. Spills to Powell Pepper inside 50. He's tackled by Zerk Thatcher. Got the hand pass away to Houston. Hand passes over his head to Drew from the top of the 50. Hooks the kick around the corner to full forward. It bounces past Narkel. Out the back, Laverde. Happy to punch it through for a minor score. But Adelaide advanced to 2 8 20. Plays Essendon 2 2 14. Three minutes played. Second term here on Grandson AFL. Cricket's about to start for day four. There is a call available through the ABC Listen app. Just look out for the red cricket ball if you want to follow along to every ball. Australia resuming two down with a lead of 221. Mark Taylor ringing the bell to signal the start of day four at Lords. The kick out. Phillips marks at half back. Uh, a little bit of a set play. He's actually isolated on that side on the uh, first gamer and they target him straight away. Phillips kicks to a one-on-one on the wing and Durham's going to get a free. Held up by Burton. And Durham sends a kick down to half forward. Archie Perkins runs onto it, takes the mark, plays on. Side steps around Williams, well centering kicks, a good one. Holtz marks in the corridor, 35 out. Good vision, got back onto his right peg and hit up his fellow top draftee in Ben Hobbs. We can shoot from straight in front. Good ball use, isn't it? Because you wouldn't say it's, it's, it's quick, it's still kick mark, but... It's, uh, you know, they were able to transition the ball from the kick out, weren't they? Through to, through to their attacking 50 really, really nicely and precisely. And, yeah, smart bit of play by Archie Perkins there. To lock it up, Ben Hobbs misses. Out to the left. 2-8 to 2-3, Port Adelaide by five, as it was at quarter time, four minutes into the second term. 
Williams with the kick in duties for the power. Oh, God, that's a shank off the boot. Wobbles to half forward, picked up by Hobbs. He hand passes inboard to Durham from 45 out. Pokes the kick into the pocket. Langford marks. But what about finding an option in the corridor instead will go back on his line. 45 degree angle to the right, 30 out from goal. Heavy shot, yeah, some good hands, I think, for Bombs supporters. Just the, the slip, wasn't it? Dylan Williams. Williams, yeah. Beautiful kick, yeah. Must be a bit great. It's play, been a lot of rain in Melbourne. Yeah, so. Tonight and today, rather. I think you two are making excuses for yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> Jew, maybe, no. Carl Langford yeah. from the pocket, sends it through. And the Bombers have hit the front for the first time tonight. 3-3-21 plays Port Adelaide, 2 8 20, Five minutes played, second term on Grandson AFL. Luke Ball and Brennan Goddard. Yeah, well, it came off an unforced error, wasn't it, from Young Williams out of full back. But Bombers definitely started better, haven't they? They managed to get the ball in their forward half, as you made mention, Bully, from that kick in, which is a rarity to go from one end to the other, which is really good targeting Young uh, Bissettini on Phillips there just from the kick in and then they're able to uh, open up the rest of the field there Fords did a really good job to length and create that space for Archie Perkins so going back at play but that's how they got the ball inside 50 and they've had a couple of opportunities now the Bombers and <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's weird to think they're up by a point uh, five minutes in the second quarter of what's happened for the last 35 minutes. Shout out to the Visitini family. I've got unconfirmed reports they're in the car on the way here. So they may be listening to the ABC on their way in with their young boy on the ground making his debut tonight. Dante Visitini. Essendon lead the game by one. Phillips out of the middle. Hand pass ends up with McGrath. Heads down to half forward for the Bombers and Wiedemann takes the mark. Chorus of support. Applause and the wee chant that goes around the G as he kicks out wide for Langford, the goal kicker. Hustled out of it by Aaliyah against the boundary line. Hobbs keeps it alive, lifts a hand pass out of play and a throw in. 60 out from the Essendon goal. So the Bombers by a point, 3-3 three, three to 2-8. They've kicked the last three of the game, Essendon, after Port Adelaide scored the first 14 points of the match. Vicentini. Battles against Phillips in the ruck. Phillips in front position, palms it down. Hobbs hacks it out of the air, and it's come off because Menzies marked inside 50. 45 out. 45 degree angle to the right. And this to extend the Bombers' lead. It's a dominant first quarter from Port Adelaide. Incident of really... Settled into this match so far. The kick from Jai Menzi, 45 out. Just falls short and is rushed through for a minor. Bombers by two, 3-4-22 to Port Adelaide, 2-8, 27 played second term. And with a kick out, Burton hits up Butters who marks at half back. He gives it back to Burton who goes on a run, runs into Phillips, runs around him. And now Burton off the back flank, kicks down to half forward. Dixon got rid of Laverty, takes the mark, pure strength. Still 70 metres out, chips a kick to centre half forward. And uh, Nackenty takes it for Port Adelaide, 45 out. Did you have this? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, of just play. be wary of who's that running around the back. Here's Farrell. Oh, lays it off. He's a long left footer. Kane Farrell always yeah, has the trip good, in him. Right? He has hammered that home from long range. A rocket from Kane Farrell. Back in front go Port Adelaide. Eight gone second term, 3-8 to 3-4. And not enough of the Bombers out there were asking the same question you were, Brennan Goddard, whether he had the trip in him and Kane Farrell made sure of it. Well, that's a disappointing thing, isn't it? I think it's a true reflection of yeah, how the opposition, when uh, a small forward in particular or someone that you doubt would get the distance that... Are you switched on enough or are you in the game enough to actually identify that he's not within his range and protect those little 45s and the handball receives? Most of play on blokes. Uh, dumb defenders, you could call them. Just uh, not paying any attention and switching off. But again, the ball started was from a kick in again. Coast so both coast teams, team, yeah. coast to coast. Dixon's looked dangerous one-on-one, yeah. on one, hasn't he? Every time oh, yeah. he's been able to isolate one-on-one. On one. But uh, I mean, they, yeah, they're a little disappointed because they've got a lot of kicks like that. We know that Farrell can do it. We know that Burton can do it. Beautiful kicking team. Houston's another one. From the middle, oh. Bombers win the clearance. Farrell with the kick. It ricochets off the boot of Phillips. Wobbles towards half forward. Aaliyah soccers it off the ground. 
Out to the outer wing. It's going to be picked up by Durham, who can hand pass inboard to Caldwell. Great tackle from Farrell. Caldwell didn't make connection with the boot. It's a free kick to Port Adelaide at right half back. Left half back. He okay. chips inboard to Houston. He's got it. Set a half back for Port. Four point lead for the power. Horn Francis back on the ground moments ago. He's had just one hand pass so far through the first quarter and a half. Fellow number one pick of yours, Beach. Short kick to Rosie. Rosie goes long to centre half forward. Dixon down there. It carries the pack. Boats out after it. Snelling gets there first. Boat tackles him. The ball up 15 metres out from the power goal at the city end. Travis Blake, you've only called his name once as well. Mm. Quite start to the night. No disposals as yet. There's a couple of tackles for Travis Boak. Ball up at the top of the square. Whistle on play from the non-controlling umpire. And it's going to go Essendon's way. Jake Kelly on the last line's defence. But is Boak on the wing with yep. Nick Martin, who is spotlighted during the week he for was, his lack yeah. of defensive work? Kelly short to Heppel. Short to Merritt. Both having quiet nights at the moment. Ball's probably been spent a bit more time out on the southern stand wing. Port Adelaide by four as Merritt kicks to that outer wing to a pack. Guelphy in front position. Does spill to him. Hacks it forward. Coming out to meet it is McKenzie for Port Adelaide who can send it back inside forward. 15-0 no home for Port. Jake Kelly takes the intercepting grab. And Kelly lays it off by hand to Ridley. Top of the defensive goal square. Short kick to Heppel who marks it half back. So it was Lee Montagna on Fox footy with some numbers showing Nick Martin's actually conceded more disposals than any other winger so far this year. So he's worked defensively, highlighted during the week. As the kick finds Zerk Thatcher, centre-half back. He swings it out to right half-back for Redmond. Short kick to Snelling. Boundary line, southern side. Port Adelaide by four. 3-8 three, to 3-4. Three, 11 gone second turn. Short kick to Cordwell. Oh, the young Another 50. Dante Pizzatini just drifting through the protected zone. The big man who got the late call up to make his debut tonight is going to be March back 50. That's a huge bonus for the Bombers. The man on the mark is actually going to stand 45 from goal. And it means that Jai Caldwell can have a ping from here. To the punt road end. It doesn't look all that confident in the distance either. You see the difference, Mason Redmond lurking around the back of him, but Marsh is putting in a bit of time or time into him, sorry. Oh, passes off short to Nick Martin, who takes a juggled mark in front of Horn Francis at centre-half forward, and Nick Martin a little closer to goal, and Caldwell able to thread the needle to send up, to set up an easier opportunity for the Bombers. Both teams just a, a little asleep. Snoozing. Yeah, snoozing Coach at the wheel, aren't they? Here will uh... Coaches. Point both coaching staff. Coach Killers. <laughs> Coach Killers, they hate those. Slow play, arguably won't make the distance. One hand will receive, two just the defenders in the mids just not protecting that dangerous space inside 50. And Nick Martin having a breakout year. Low trajectory drop punt is pure. Through it goes. And the lead changes again. As it has done on every goal so far in this second term. The Bombers by two points. 4-4, they lead Port Adelaide 3-8. It's the Dons by a couple. 13 gone, second term. Luke Ball, Brennan Goddard. Well, he's... Uh, we've all lauded him, we've lauded him, haven't we? He's had such an impact in his, his first two years. Nick Martin, a little bit quieter today, but always got a really happy knack of finding himself in good positions. In the forward 50, doesn't he? And, and uh, you know, regularly hits the scoreboard, so... Yeah, but again, a, a bit of a sloppy bit of play on both teams in the last five minutes. Jason Horn Francis now goes into the centre bounce. He's got to stuck in his hands on the footy. Only the one handball, as you said, Corp. Mm. Wiedemann against Finlayson in the ruck. Well, Favours Wiedemann, but he palms it straight down to Horn Francis, who jams it towards half forward. Narkel in a race with Heppel. Flying through is Martin, who collects. Hand passes to McGrath. Loops the hand pass over the top to Heppel. Close to the boundary line. Kicks down the wing. Standing in the middle of a couple of bombers is Farrell, who chips it forward for, to Felaysen. Martin got a hand in there, but Felaysen collects. Gives it to Wise. Now to Narkel. They're inside 50 port to Drew. To Horn Francis. Kicks into the pocket where he finds Rosie. 45 out from goal, about 10 in from the boundary. The dangerous proposition when you've got uh, Rosie just resting forward. 
And you still have Butters, Francis, Ollie Wines as your inside mids. Connor Rosie kicked a goal in the first quarter. This is a tough shot from the pocket. Ooh. But he is up to the task. He's got two. And Port Adelaide wrestled back the lead. Fourth lead changes in this second term. It is Port 4-8, 32 to Essendon. 4-4, 28, 15 played. Second term, your experts are Luke Ball and Brendan Goddard. Two goals, six from turnovers. It could have been, could have been a lot worse, Port, to uh, to this point in the game. Bombers kicked four goals, one. So it's been that sort of game, hasn't it, a bit? Just, uh, you know, when you they feel like they're out. It's an unforced error, that kick from Heppel. Was in the vicinity of some free bombers players, but just didn't hit either of them, did it? And, and Farrell was in the right spot again. He's having some sort of night, Kane Farrell. He's uh, he's in everything at the moment, so we know when he gets it, something tends uh, something tends to happen. So yeah, it's a it's a interesting game, obviously, isn't it? Goal for goal, no side really been able to find their their flow at the moment. Port Adelaide by four, back in the middle. Finlayson leaps high, wins the hit out. Tried to follow up, but it spills to Parrish. His hand pass turned over. Drew had it. Tackled by Parrish. Lost it. Menzi away towards Wiedemann by hand to Hobbs. Back to Wiedemann. Kicks to centre half forward. Darm trying to trap it. Spills through to Perkins. Hooks it going. Gets a coin bounce. Not quite. Clips the post on the way through. Turned back sharply towards uh, uh, the goal face. And now the kick out. He's under siege again as McKenzie turns it over. Langford hand pass to Perkins high up and under the top of the goal square McKenzie punches it through to make that two more behinds for the Bombers they move to 4-6 to Port Adelaide 4-8 it's Port by two 16 gone second term lucky to get away with that one that would have been arguably two goals from direct turnovers for kick-ins from Port Adelaide so they've got to just clean up a little bit of mess this time Farrell runs his full measure and then kicks long into the centre square. It gets out the back of the pack. Redmond there is brought down by Powell Pepper when he didn't have the footy. So it's a free kick to Redmond. At half back for the Bombers. Got Adelaide by two. Midway through this second term on Grandson AFL. Redmond called to play on. Bombs it long to half forward. Fly from the back from Perkins. It's off hands coming through. Parrish can't collect. Now picked up by Dixon, who loops the hand pass over the top to Butters, who somehow found some room in traffic. Hacks it forward. And it's going to go out of bounds for a throw-in at left half forward for Port Adelaide. Can I run a theory by you? Is there an unusual number tonight of balls carrying the pack? Have you guys <laughs> noticed that? Rather than dropping in front of it or players getting It's not as cold as other nights. Ball travelling further. Is that what you're saying? It just feels like a lot of the, a lot of the guys are leading underneath the footy some penetrating kicks on this port. In fact, both teams have got some, some serious penetration in their kicking, so we'll keep an eye on that, though, Corb. Yep. I'll, I'll leave that to you <laughs> Boundary throw in. Hobbs, hurry kick, kick forward for Essendon. <laughs> Perkins and Bergman in the one-on-one. -on -one. Ball spills down in front of uh, Farrell. He fumbles it out of play, so we're throwing on the southern wing. Port yeah, the middle mass useless stats. They have got yeah. some prodigious kicks, though. When you look at you know, Farrell, McKenzie, Burton, Williams. Houston. Just... Just feels more than usual that the oh, no. we've had yeah. seven or eight players around the footy and the clean bowls all of them straight out the back. Port by two. Throwing on the southern wing, Weedham in a front position, brought it down. Dixon over the Drew, in fact, with his opponent in a headlock. And then Pye says, I'll have it. Weedham against Finlayson. Weedham slaps it down. Farrell chasing after it for Port. He collects. Corralled by Durham, gets the kick away. It's a lovely, well way to kick. Spots Finlayson, two kicks from goal. We'll send it long towards Dixon. Uh, he, uh, Marshall's also there, brought it to ground, close to the boundary line. Drew kept it in, gives it to McEntee. Now back to Butters. He yeah, passes to Wines on the paint of 50, chips it to Nark, who's found some space. That's gone all Just the minutes. required distance, and he is going to line up. About 40 out, 45 degree to the left. I was a bit unattended uh, for mine, it felt, from that stoppage. Again, it's Farrell. It's a great left foot kick to Finlayson, I think it was. It ducked out the back on Wiedemann. And then from there, they trapped the ball inside 50. Pretty good pressure. A couple of handballs and find an uncontested mark. A couple of goals to Quinton Narkel in his club debut against Geelong. This is his second game in his new colours. 
And he kicks truly. Port Adelaide extend their lead to eight points, 5-8-38 to Essendon, 4-6-30. 20 minutes played in this second term on Grandson AFL. Well, they would have some uh, inside intel from Quentin Narkle playing for VFL Essendon. So, standalone team Essendon having, they typically, like most teams, try and play the way the seniors are playing. So, he'd have all the intel, all the lingo. He's playing as an inside mid there. We played Essendon early in the season being Sandy VFL. Uh, so he'd know all the hit twos, where they're going. So he would have passed on all that information during the week. So no wonder they brought him in. <laughs> it, it is an amazing story, isn't it, though, to get delisted, uh, get a spot back on an AFL list in the mid-season draft. And the first two games you played is one against your old team, Geelong, and the next one against the VFL side that you've been, uh, or the club you've been part of, obviously, on the fringes throughout the year in Essendon. Back in the middle, Phillips wins the hit out down to Parrish. Stolen away from him, but has got it out. Hand pass away to Horn Francis. Runs a long way. Kicks from the 50. He's offline, and in the end, it ends up out of play. Karen Peterson's on the boundary. It was uh, just a bounce before going out, so boundary throw in forward pocket. Kes? A little bit of concern for Ryan Burton. Left knee concern down here. I'll keep an eye on it let you know if he heads back on the ground. Zach Butter's getting busy this quarter. Eight possessions to 13 for the game. Dixon against Phillips in Ruck, who wins the tap, then wins the ground ball. Gives it to Laverde. Hacks the kick around the corner towards the outer side. Bounces in front of Perkins. Close to the line. And it is out of play. And off the knee. The other Zach. Sorry, Jess. The other Zach's gone the other way at this quarter. Just the one position. Zach Merritt started really well. The bomb was going in that first quarter, but under control. Has he got Drew? Has he got... Yeah. He's not on the ground at the moment. From the throw-in, Drew for Port Adelaide. Hand passes over his head looking for Boak. He gets the hand pass out. Looking for Horn Francis. Snelling got a hand in there. Now Caldwell picks it up. Gives it to Perkins. And now to Merritt. His hand pass to Parrish on the pointage of the square. Chips in board and finds Heppel at centre-half back. His hand pass to Guelphie who had a fumble. Now it spills back to Heppel who gives it to Merritt. He chips it looking for Martin. It goes over his head. Still a chance for the Bombers as it spills to Kelly. His kick into the pocket. Looking for Stringer. Great work from McKenzie to slap it out of play, throwing it left half forward for Essendon. Finding ways of just hurting themselves at the minute. The Bombers are out through the corridor. Great bit of ball movement. That man you just mentioned, Zachy Merrick, got his hands on it a number of times. And then great handball from Heppel to create speed or or keep speed on the ball. And Wolfie just fumbles it with no pressure around him. Boundary throw in Rucks, run underneath it. Spills through to Nick Martin. Hand pass into the pocket. Butters is tackled, dispossessed. Stringer got him now. He has the footy. He's tackled and a ball up. Forward pocket for the Doms. Port by eight points. 22 gone, second term. Umpire chunks it up, deep forward for Essendon. Phillips down to Parrish, squeeze the kick goal. Caught bounce on the line, and Leon leaps up trying to palm it through. It kicked at the exact moment Parrish needed it to. I think this is going to be a goal. And Aaliyah's effort on the line is all in vain. All oh, these soft callers are behind. Ooh. And he's all the ball over all the line no, before it Aaliyah touches there it. it. Not quite. He's touched it. He touched, it. he touched it there. That's a good shot. Yeah. Still on the line. I just hope the technology works. It's in the exact spot. Oh, it's what it's we're good after. when it works, doesn't it? Good Absolutely. up it's a, uh, Not a moment too soon. It's a behind. As you said, good umpiring. And the arc backed it all up. A behind for Essendon. Port lead by seven. 23 gone second term. Grandstand AFL. Big smile on Aaliyah's face when he saw the replay too as Farrell from the kick in. That's a good mark taken by Houston. A hand passes to Boca, gives it back to Houston. On the wing is run down, just got the hand pass away. But it goes straight to Cordwell, who's tackled strongly by Boke. Ball spills out, Hall Francis picks it up. He's tackled by Parrish. Umpire says, I will have it. Ball up, centre wing out of side. Port Adelaide by seven. Uh, the cricket is on at the moment, so you can listen to it through the ABC Listen app. Look out for the red cricket ball. Australia still two down, a lead of 232 in the second innings. From the stoppage, Perkins wins the clearance, kicks towards half forward, but it goes out of play for a throw in it right half forward. Bombers into attack. They trail port by seven, 23 played second term. Kawaja 63, Smith 11, two not out batters. And boundary throw in. And both rucks miss it again. There's an infringement, though, against Visitini in the right contest. It's going to Phillips. 
The Essendon big man and his third club can kick the Dons inside 50. He looks for Peter Wright. Aaliyah nudges him underneath the footy, oh. claiming the mark. Hunt says it was touched on the way through. Hurried handball, put Williams under the puff. Lost it. Nick Martin, centre half forward, hand pass to Snelling. Shoots goal when it's marked on the goal line. And McKenzie saves the day for Port Adelaide. Moves it hurriedly, put Bonner under pressure. Got to him on the half volley. Long kick down the line to Ben Jones. Redmond breaks it up. Hurry, kick back inside for the Bombers. Wait a minute, the drop. Can't complete the chest mark. Comes down to Bergman. He ushers it out to Horn Francis. He's tackled front on by Guelphy. And a ball up, centre half forward for Essendon. Good footy. Port by seven, 25 gone, second term. I hope it was that for Mason Redman. Just a, a closing speed to get there, affect the spoil, and then pump it inside 50. Great stuff. Horn Francis from the stoppage wins the clearance, sends a long ball to half forward. Finlayson overran it. Dixon also there, and Byrne Jones just hacks it off the deck into space. Finlayson can run onto this if he can keep it alive. He can't. He had an open 50 to work with. The ball is out of play. 40 around from the Port Adelaide goal. They lead by seven points, 25 played second term. Port Adelaide on a club record 11 game winning streak, but they are coming off the bye. And as we've seen in recent weeks, Teams aren't doing too well coming off the bye. Essendon trying to keep their place in the top eight from the throw-in. Boak robed the Phillips tap, got the hand pass away. Chasing after it is Rosie. Gets boot to ball over the head of Finlayson. Zerk Thatcher got hands to it, couldn't complete the mark, and then has to turn tackler. Umpires looking at it and says holding the ball. Free kick to Essendon on the last line of defence. One and nine, those numbers now, with the Bulldogs the only victorious team against the side that had played the week before. 29 point win over Freo earlier today. Richmond losing on Thursday night. And the Bombers are the established team here, having played last week. Port Adelaide off the bye. Merritt from the back pocket. Long kick down the wing, and Phillips hands to it, takes the mark. Seven point lead for Port Adelaide. 26 gone, second turn. Phillips. Kicks to the front edge of the square. Right hands to it, no mark. Falls to Farrell of Port Adelaide. Hand pass back to Bergman. Floats a kick down the wing. They all rise on the wing, no mark. Comes back uh, to Kelly of the Bombers. Hand pass away to Hobbs. Just kicks a high up and under. Back to halfway. A little nudge from Butters. Spills through to McKenzie. Hand pass to Rosie. Sends the power down to half forward. And Hentel throws himself in front of Finlayson to take the intercept mark. Half back for the Bombers. Port Adelaide by seven. Kicks it laterally to Laverde. Has Red Redmond short. Ignores that. Decides to wind up and thump it down the line. Looking for Langford in a one-on-one. -on -one. Had to bring it to ground. Hobbs, was he caught high? No. Tackled by a couple of Port Adelaide players. And we've got a stoppage. In front of the interchange gates. In front of us in our broadcast position on the members' wing. Phillips with the tap down. It's sharked by Butters, who... Like he fell awkwardly as he kicked the ball out of bounds on the full. He is getting to his feet. Looks okay. So free kick to Mason. Redmond on the wing position, member side. Redmond goes short to Parrish. The two off contract bombers kicks down to half forward. A leer up strong in the pack. Thumps it away down to the path of Houston. He goes short to Butters, who's all alone in front of the benches. Plays on immediately. Death kick along the line. Finds Narkel. The flowing blonde locks. Kicks inboard, overcooks it. Miss Houston. Bombers back onto it through Guelphy. Back flank, no one to give it to. Sweeps a hand pass back to Merritt. Against the down oh, line, exactly. still half back. Superb. Back inboard on the 45 to Durham. Hand pass releases Parrish. Kicks inside 50, sprays it. Bergman trying to break it up. Can't control it. Falls to Stringer, centre half forward. Hand pass back to Parrish. Second effort is also wild. Misses out to the right. He's butchered two off the boot. Parish in succession. And Port Adelaide lead the game by six. 5-8 to 4-8. A goal the difference as we close in on halftime. And Darcy Parish with a couple of kicks he'd want again, Jess. Port Adelaide started inaccurately. Essendon have joined them. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, that, that kick from Zach Merrick deserved to set up a goal, didn't it? Have, uh, have this one out there, the Bombers. McKenzie with a long kick in to the centre square. And Layson brought it down. The Bombers kick it inside the arc. Aaliyah's fallen awkwardly. Houston was caught high. Free kick at centre half back. We saw Aaliyah. It was a, a good contest. Good courage. A steaming Jakey Stringer coming out at him. Houston 
flares it out wide to Farrell, who then kicks it to Bonner, left half back. Aaliyah looks okay, although the trainers are going out to him now. So not long before half time, Port Adelaide by six. Bonner on the outer side will thump it long down the line to a contest. Bombers have the numbers, but it spills to Boak. Gets on the left, spills to Vicentini, the first gamer, and who gives it off to Byrne Jones into the pocket. Laverde in best position against Dixon, fumbles it over the line. But it was a free kick anyway for being held. So free kick to the Bombers in the back pocket. Laverde to take it. Oh, short kick inboard finds Ridley. 2020 best and fairest winner. Port by six, half hour mark, second turn. Ridley goes long with the contest, kick up to the wing, right in the pack, hands to it, juggled mark, paid. Defensive side of the logo, he's racing the clock as the seconds tick down on the first half. Heads to half forward, string of the target, got a shove, not paid. Umpire says, I'll have to share him and that'll do us. Half time at the G, standalone Saturday night footy in round 16, and it's Port Adelaide by six points. The power by 5838 Essendon 4832. The goal kickers, Connor Rosie, is the only man with a couple. He has two for Port Adelaide, and then one each for Farrell, Dixon, and Narkel. Meanwhile, for Essendon, Nick Martin, Carl Langford, Jaden Laverde, and Matt Guelphy all have one each. There was a bit of drama before the bounce when uh, Scott Lysett tweaked his knee. So he was withdrawn well after the teams had come through. This was literally minutes before the opening bounce. And Dante Visitini, who's the 20-year-old travelling emergency and young big. Say that again. Dante Visitini. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was... <laughs> <laughs> From Xavier College, fourth round pick in 2021. 202 centimetre lad who uh, basically came out of the... The player's box as an emergency to make his debut very late in the piece. Had his ankles strapped on the bench uh, through the first 15 minutes of the opening quarter. Neither sub used. Dylan Scheel is the sub coming back from a foot injury for the Bombers. And Jace Burgoyne is the sub for Port. Power by six at half time. Earlier today, Collingwood by 12 go goals over Gold Coast. Western Bulldogs by 29 over Fremantle. And Adelaide by 11 goals over North. Half time at the G, Port Adelaide by six. The thoughts of Brendan Goddard and Luke Ball on Grandstand AFL. Oh, much more even quarter, wasn't it, BG? In fact, the Bombers started to get the game a bit more back on their terms. It started around the contest and clearance. It, they got touched up a bit around the clearances in the first quarter, but it was 11-8 that quarter, which allowed them, to obviously, to get the ball forward and then set up the ground a bit better and, and, and play a bit more of a forward half game. Uh, and as a result, 13 inside, 50s to 11. For two goals, six, so... Uh, both teams the really, the yeah, that's right. Maybe both teams um, squandering chances in the air. I mean, Darcy Parrish, he's just got to knock that one over, doesn't he? Just to cap off the good work from his teammates ahead of the field. But he had a good quarter. He had, he had uh, eight possessions that quarter, five of those contested. So he started to get them going a bit. I mean, Phillips, they started to get on top a bit around the ball. As you would expect, uh, uh, Andrew Phillips, a terrific, you know, experienced war horse up against the first game up who was, you know, sitting in the crowd two minutes before the first bounce. So that is an opportunity for the Bombers. Well, it uh, looks like they're targeting too, they can target. like around That's the ground, right. kick-ins in particular, the, the long down the line. I think there's a clear message that he needs to get there and be a target, not only to help Peter Wright, but now that he's arguably got a mismatch in, in a first game, Ruckman. We spoke about, uh, I, think, I thought Zach Butters really started to get going that quarter. Just watched him, he's just so clever at... at, at at reading the game, and particularly when you know the ball sort of bobbing around in a contested situation, he, he'll, he'll pop out into space, forward of the ball, and inevitably end up with the ball in his hands. He had ten possessions that quarter and three score involvement, so you know he's one to watch from the Bombers' point of view. We mentioned you know the, the Port halfbacks, Kane Farrell's had a really good game. He's had eight, he had eight possessions that quarter. Dan Houston eight possessions. And it really is when you when you you look at that you know look at that sort of back six back seven that and we we said it a few times, Corbin. I think it's got to be linked to your theory around the the ball carrying over the back more tonight than <laughs> than usual. I, and maybe we need to go back and have a look at these poor games because they have you know everyone in that back six can absolutely roost the footy. Mm. I don't know whether it's by design or not. Well, I think well, now we've shown that like, with Williams going back there, we know what Burt can do. Farrell. But Kenzie, you know the the original, the OG Cannon, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. They, they have still the Cannon. Predict, you know, they have a prodigious kicking team. But their, but their teammates know 
their That's strengths right. and their Ridiculous. ability to kick the ball yeah. and with penetration and depth. So, yeah, so if it, if it is a bit of a habit, then they, they, they should know and they should almost use it as a weapon that they can actually uh, get on the back of the Essendon defenders, which most teams now are being really aggressive playing up in front and they're actually trying to expose them because they have the ability to kick the ball arguably 8 to 10 metres further and find space over the back where otherwise that you can't actually access because you can't kick the ball that far. I know you guys hate it when we do this, uh, when it comes to former players and we try and put them into brackets where you look at the absolute <laughs> top shelf midfielders compared to the next line. And it's up to you guys to make these comments, but just as a Over the ball, eh? average sports guy that sort of watches the footy, the difference between Zach Merritt's kick where he pulls it on the 45 and then Parrish gets not only one, but two opportunities. And he's butchered one going inside 50. Then he had the chance to kick the goal, and he butchered that too. What he does well, I, I, you know, he's a, he's a top-shelf elite clearance player. We know that. He's a, a terrific accumulator. But that is the one thing, for me, that stops him from from really elevating into that top echelon. And it's kind of who which he is, is now. Which is hard. Like, no, of course it is. Yeah, no, we're talking about, about the not, absolute top of the tree. Correct. There's That's not right. so many guys in that bracket. It's not like the But we're also trees. talking about 100%. a guy out of contract who's, who wants to get and, paid those sort of dollars. Yeah, and, and, and for mine, that's the difference. That's what we're talking about. That's the difference between yep. that, you know, if you want to call it sort of A minus or whatever, you know, that 1A and, and then, a, and yeah. then the, the, the real sort Proper of A-grader. top of the tree. Yeah, that's right. Um, a grade match winner. Yeah, 15 possessions for, for Darcy. And I, again, I thought he really got going. In an, in an area where they were down in the first quarter, so we know that you know clearance, contest, terrific, but that's the one thing. And 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 what is he? 26, 27. It's kind of who he is now. Like, we, we, you know, yeah, yeah that, that's sort of who he is. There's probably not. I mean, you can always keep trying to improve that, but um, you know, that was a really stark bit of play, wasn't it? I mean, that, that was a magnificent kick from Zach, from Zach Merritt and bit of vision that really should have resulted in a goal. Either that. You know, easy sort of hit up from uh, from the key forward and then the opportunity to, to knock one over from 30 metres out. So we're being critical, obviously, because, we, we, you know, the top midfielders in the game, you, you, you tend to mark them pretty uh, or a lot harder. But that's, that is the one thing. And I know you're a Bomber, so bomber supporters would, would, uh, would certainly agree with that. But having said that, you know, he's still clearly he's going to play a massive role in, in the Bombers in this second half, being able to match it because what Porter been able to do in this 11... Uh, game winning streak is really put the foot down after half time yep. uh, and, and you know dial the pressure up dial the head up around the ball uh, and then their ball use when the game starts to open up a bit their ball use their beautiful kicking skills start to uh, to come into play so uh, you know, really a much better quarter from the Bombers that that one um, and they go in you know pretty even at half time the, the, the challenge is going to come in this third quarter I think They've won all eight games this year, Port Adelaide, that they've led at half time, And it's a good discrepancy to make when we talk the conversation about Parrish. And in, in a salary cap league, it's an allocation of resources where you've only got this much amount of spend on certain guys and whether you're willing to break the bank or sell the farm or however you want to put it for, for certain players to sort of know what you're getting and, and what category they're in. Uh, it is half time at the MCG. Brennan Goddard, superb story about coming in as a late change for Australia, is coming up on the other side of the latest from the ABC newsroom. So stick around for that. Port Adelaide by six at half time. In the cricket, Australia still two down on the morning of day four. They lead by 245 runs. If you want to listen, you can do so through the ABC Listen app. Just look for the red cricket ball. There's also the Women's Ashes, which continues tonight straight after day four. So it's the first of the T20 games to be played from Edgebaston. The crowd of around 20,000 are expected. So you'll hear that on Sport Digital and through the Listen app uh, with the start around 4 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So perhaps when you get up in the morning and you're looking for some cricket on the radio, you'll be able to find it there. Uh, I'll bring you up to date with what's happened in footy. Uh, around the place today, three games already completed Saturday of round 16. But for now, let's get the latest from the ABC Newsroom. Hello, this is ABC News with David Rollins. The federal opposition is criticising the government's economic management, saying the larger-than-expected surplus for this financial year is a result of luck. The May budget forecasts a surplus of $4.2 billion for the 2022-23 financial year, but new figures from the Finance Department show it will be more than $19 billion. Shadow Climate Change and Energy Minister Ted O'Brien insists the government shouldn't be praised for benefiting from higher tax revenue. Labor might be licking its lips with a budget surplus, but Australian households are on their knees in pain. Labor should not confuse dumb luck 
with good policy. If it were good policy, they'd be forecasting surpluses well into the future, but that's not the case. The Victorian opposition says Victorians will be hit with increased taxes and charges from today because of the Andrews government's waste and incompetence. Energy bills, public transport and motoring costs are all going up. Opposition leader John Pasuto says it's putting more strain on Victorians who are already struggling with the rising cost of living. The recent budget that the Andrews government brought down showed that Victoria is broke, that life is getting harder and the Victorians are being punished for the financial incompetence of the Andrews government. Well, today, the 1st of July, life gets a lot harder. Air traffic controller shortages have led to flight cancellations and delays across Australia's east coast today. Virgin Australia has apologised after groups of AFL fans missed an afternoon game when six flights from Melbourne to the Gold Coast were cancelled. Jetstar customer John is in good spirits as he faced a seven-hour delay at Melbourne Airport after his flight to Queensland also couldn't take off. We weren't given a reason why, but our flight was cancelled. We've got crosswords, we've got books. Goat Island in Sydney Harbour is set to be returned to traditional owners who know it as Meemal. Lydia Fang explains. The state government signed a memorandum of understanding with the Meemal Transfer Committee. The 14-member group is made up of key Aboriginal representatives who are figuring out the best way to transfer the site to the local community. The state government has committed $43 million to restoring and transferring the island to Indigenous people. The funds will not only go towards maintaining the island, but repairing and restoring historical buildings here too. It's unclear when the transfer of the island will officially take place but will hopefully one day reopen to the general public under Indigenous administration. This year's National NAIDOC Week Awards are getting underway in Brisbane. Almost 2,000 people are attending the ceremony themed For Our Elders. In order to recognise the role the older generation plays in First Nations communities, the 10 NAIDOC Awards recognise excellence among young people, creative talent, sports stars as well as education and innovation. Platypuses could soon be reintroduced to Adelaide's River Torrens with a new study showing positive signs. The iconic animal is listed as a threatened species in Australia and endangered in South Australia. The species can be found on Kangaroo Island after a translocation program in the 1920s. The study by Green Adelaide saw that the river has sufficient amounts of macroinvertebrates to support the reintroduction. More work is expected to take place over the next year to better understand the management of potential predators and river health. At least 51 people have died after a truck ploughed into pedestrians and other vehicles in western Kenya. The BBC's Anthony Arungu has the story. The tragic incident unfolded when a truck lost control and collided with public service vehicles, motorbike operators and roadside vendors. Police say the truck collided with at least seven stationary vehicles at a bustling roadside market. Rescue operations are ongoing, but heavy rainfall has hampered efforts to rescue people trapped in the wreckage of the vehicles. The accident has raised questions about road safety and the need for stricter regulations to prevent such accidents. The southern African country of Botswana and the De Beers diamond firm say they've reached in principle agreement on a new deal for diamond sales. The deal would end months of tense negotiations that seem to threaten their 54-year-old partnership. The planned new agreement for rough diamond production covers 10 years, while mining licences for their joint venture are set to be extended for 25 years. It's not immediately clear if Botswana will be getting a bigger share of the joint venture's output. And that brings you up to date with ABC News. Burr intercepts, dribbles into the area, curse strike, the Aussie captain scores! Sam Kerr puts the ball into the back of the net. The 2023 Women's Football World Cup. Starts July 20 on ABC Sport. Your fortune awaits. Please sit down. You desire connection to your community. To be abreast of events and up to date at all times. In your future, I see the ABC Listen app. I see you up to date with current affairs, politics and the latest conversations on your local ABC radio station. Your reading is complete. Put that filthy money away. The ABC Listen app is as free as a bird. Now go and download the ABC Listen app. Grandstand AFL. AFL. Now streaming every match.
Flash on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Wobbles to half forward, picked up by Hobbs. He hand passes inboard to Durham from 45 out, pokes the kick into the pocket. Langford marks. Carl Langford from the pocket, sends it through. And the Bombers have hit the front for the first time tonight. Ships a kick to centre half forward and McIntyre takes it 45 out. Does he have this? Who's that running around the back? Here's Farrell. Lays it off. He's a long left footer. Kane Farrell always has the trip in him. He has hammered that home from long range. A rocket from Kane Farrell. Big Martin having a breakout year. Low trajectory drop punt is pure. Sure it goes. And the lead changes again. As it has done on every goal so far in this second term. The Bombers by two points. To Drew, to Horn Francis, kicks into the pocket where he finds Rosie. This a tough shot from the pocket, but he is up to the task. He's got two. He hand passes to Wines on the paint of 50, chips it to Narkel, who's found some space. A couple of goals to Quinton Narkel in his club debut against Geelong. This is his second game in his new colours. And he kicks truly the 2023 AFL season on radio, ABC Sport Digital and now streaming on the ABC Listen app. Four lead changes in that second quarter alone. It is Port Adelaide by six points at halftime. Standalone footy Saturday night in round 16. Corbin Middlemass and Jess Webster, Karen Peterson on the boundary. Brennan Goddard and Luke Ball, your grandstand AFL experts. The power 5838 Essendon 4832. Now, the, go- the winners earlier today, Saturday footy, first of all, in the twilight, it was Collingwood by 12 goals over the Gold Coast. And this was built up very much as the Suns' big challenge, first time since 2014. They've been sort of in the season at the halfway mark. Of course, the famous Ablett injury that night. You fast forward nine years on and you thought, what could it amount to for the Gold Coast? The Suns actually won that game where Ablett got hurt, by the way, got themselves to eight and six. Instead, they were never in it. They got absolutely whacked. And in the end, 78 points, probably... Looks a little prettier than what it was uh, It was headed to at one point early in that second half. So, huge win for Collingwood. Elsewhere today, the afternoon fixtures, Adelaide by 11 goals over North. The Roos were actually within seven time on in the second term, but the Crows just pulled away after half time, And the Western Bulldogs by 29 over Fremantle. Similar theme. The, um, Fremantle were in front in the last quarter, and then the Bulldogs kicked five unanswered goals to basically burn off the contest. Beach, we've been talking about it all night after... Dante Visatini is the late inclusion, extremely late for, it, for Scott Lysett. You built this up. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we just hold the story to the, the nah, end we got of the game. Now's, now's <laughs> just the time. Just to get I our think. listeners, if they're that intrigued by it, just to hang on for another two yeah. quarters. So yeah. they have to listen to us. I feel like now's the time. This now's is the time. When you're the late, uh, late inclusion, late inclusion okay. for Australia. A <laughs> little, little bit, uh, slightly different circumstances. So the, uh, Sam Fish and I were dropped for the second game, International Rules. Played yep. the first one. Long story, we didn't play much. Anyway, Kevin Sheedy came and just said, mate, we're sorry, boys. Someone's going to have to miss out. It's you two. said, OK, no worries. Went to the leadership group at the time. On leadership the tour, group. Which was <laughs> Barry Hall, Dustin Fletcher. <laughs> and said, uh, boys, it being emergencies or emergencies being dropped, can we go out, go out, have a good time in Ireland and in Dublin? And so my housemate at the time, Nick Del Sano, one of his scaly mates from Bendigo, was living in uh, Dublin at the time. So I uh, got a hold of him. Uh, he took us out. Uh, long story short, got home at about 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> had to get on the bus at 10.30. Well, so time. <laughs> rolled into the bus, had the sunnies on, sat at the front, and I turned to Sam Fisher. I said, mate, um, did you bring any, any gear? <laughs> Sam Fisher, Paulie knows him well. <laughs> He's um, 10 cents short of a dollar. He just looked at me and laughed, so I knew the answer. <laughs> he didn't have to say anything. So anyway, got to the game. So you're the emergencies and neither of you have any gear? No, go to the game. Uh, sitting in the crowd, and I said to Chips, beautiful day, Croke Park, full stadium. Uh, mate, we better just start hydrating just in case. Got the sunnies. We're sit- literally sitting in the sunlight down here in front of the interchange or behind the interchanges at the time at Croke Park, soaking in the sun, just, you know, getting some rays, some vitamin D, sipping on some water. And uh, in the main warm-up, Lindsay Gilby comes running off the ground with the physios. And Sam and I look at each other, well, both just turn white. <laughs> and Sauce so- so- Stephen Savani comes charging up the race, comes... <laughs> I still remember it like yesterday. Rudd <laughs> stands at the fence, and we're like sitting on the fence in these seats. He stares at us, looks at both of us, and I reckon he only picked me because he looked at Chips and said, you're no good, mate. Your, your eyes are like, I won't use you're the asleep. phrase. Yeah, you were half asleep still. So he looked at me and he goes, BJ, you're in. And I went, I won't use the explicit. I said, Sauce. I said, what do you mean? He's like, 
you got your effing gear? I said, mate, I don't have any gear. And he goes, what size shoe are you? I said, oh, size 13 boot. And he goes, I'll find your boots. He goes, they they got your kit for you. Go get your kit on. So I run down there and we're standing there. At this stage, they're going through official ceremony in front of 90,000. And I've started my warm-up pre-game in the middle of the ceremony. They've got drums and... The musical going on, like playing this Irish music. About and six hours after you got home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not great for a hangover. And then so I played, long story, again, long story short, I played about, Sam and I were both in these back rotations in the first game and it was up to the players to spin yourself off and Sam and I just couldn't get all these, like Campbell Brown, there's a couple of old, older blokes just wouldn't come off. So he literally played about 10 minutes, so it was stiff that game. Hardly could get on the ground and within five minutes I was on the ground, <laughs> hung over. <laughs> Like anything in front of 90,000 people. And I kicked an under in the first three wow. minutes I was on. In the I was net. playing as a, f- as a forward. Uh, and it's then the, the, my teammates at the time running around, there's a few like uh, Pebbles O'Keefe and Barry Hall, Matty Lappin. They all knew that we all went out. And I'm running around and they're all going, mate, this is... They're all dominating the game on this stage. And they're like, mate, this is ridiculous. You're hungover and you're getting more, more kicks than I am. This is bullshit. <laughs> and, and so... And so what? People are going to try and tell us that they didn't take international rules seriously. And then, <laughs> well, yeah, we didn't. Turn, we did, and then actually, <laughs> then uh, subsequently uh, got suspended for about five years after that because we got an all-in brawl after people's like Keith and Barry got yes. in a scuffle and he head butted someone. And the, that was a game where the Irish coach actually called the game off after a scuffle. Oh, wow. It might have been the second quarter, and someone laid a tackle, knocked the Irish player out. He said, "We're done," and they walked off the ground. So wow. Sheeds. Wow. And the uh, Australian staff had to convince them to come back on to finish the game. <laughs> you, you didn't take that back to the AFL in your preparation for St Kilda after uh, your back. success there? Yeah. Uh, Brendan Goddard with us on Grandstand AFL. Second half upon us, Port Adelaide by six. A noodle Hobbs was it caught high by Vicentini. It's holding the ball, in fact. So the first gamer, Dante Vicentini. That's a good start to the second half. That'll really please the coaching staff. Great second effort. Quick to dish it off to Farrell, who was under pressure. Hand pass backwards to Burton. He had a fumble. Vicentini goes in again, and now they've coughed it up. Caldwell knows a free kick for too high. It's going the bomber's way to Caldwell in the middle of the ground. No one stands no, the mark. <laughs> well, he wanted to dish it off to Merritt, who I think ran across the mark. He has to come back anyway. So Jai Caldwell from the centre square. This time decides to pump it long to a big pack at the top of the square. Aaliyah almost uncontested in the end. Rises high, reels in the mark. The last line of defence. Oh, gee, that'll disappoint Brad Scott. Oh, and he's turned it over. He wanted to chip short to Houston, but instead coming across is Menzi. He chips in board to Guelphy. Wow. So a bad error from Aaliyah in defence. He's coughed up a shot at goal. And Matt Guelphy is about 35 out. 45 degree angle to the right. Well, I think Kenny Inkle is going to be yeah, more just, disappointed just, after Yeah, that. I was about to say, BG, with, with all those numbers around the ball for a leader to take an uncontested mark, 15 metres out from goal, he's, uh, he's not good, but a bit of a brain fade from him. Well done by John Menzi, just to be alert, to cut that off. Matt Guelphie kicked a goal in the opening quarter. This to draw scores level. He steers it through. And we're all tied up at the G. 5-8-38 each. Two minutes played in the third term. Yeah, it was Menzi, uh, uh, Menzi, sorry, as you said, Jess, but just the ability to close out with speed, just an attempt to get there. It's one of those things, I bet you Aaliyah actually just saw him out of the corner of his eye, closing with speed, reading the cues. It just planted a little bit of a seed of doubt. It's, uh, it does that to you when you see a guy defending with speed. It's really noticeable. And I've put my house on it, he saw it which may have affected the kick. So, really good by Menzi. That's what he's there for. Forward pressure, turned the ball over, and then did the unselfish thing, centering it to Guelphie, which gave him a better look on goal. Coming off a career year as well, Matt Guelphie. A couple of goals for him tonight. He was top three in the best and fairest last year. Back in the middle. Scores level. Phillips leaping up, wins the hit out down to Horn Francis. Just the five touches in the first half. Tackled. He's lying on his back and hit hard by Phillips. He's a little slow to get up behind that. Butters was caught and Hobbs rewarded the tackler. He's had a sort of pseudo run with job. He's sort of been in and around him at the stoppages. Hobbs as he kicks to set a half forward. The Bombers deep in attack again. Spills through to Perkins. Hand pass to Phillips. Away to Parrish. Hand pass knocked down. Horn Francis back onto it. Turned over in the tackle by Guelphie and will have a ball up. 40 out from the Essendon goal. Good pressure. Tackle okay? Borderline, didn't it? 
from the ball up, picked up by Burton for Port Adelaide. He gives it to Boak, who kicks down the line. Dixon has two to beat, Laverde out the back. Got hands to it, then followed up a grand level. His hand pass to Durham, who had a bit of a slip. Now it spills to Redmond in front of the interchange gates. Kicks up towards half forward. It doesn't have enough penetration on it to get to Guelphie, and Burton slides in and takes the intercepting grab for Port Adelaide. Scores a level here at the MCG. Four play third term. Burton long down the line. The fly from behind from Burn Jones. But standing in, in front is Merritt, who takes the mark. Hand passes to Langford. His hand pass to Merritt. In, uh, McGrath, rather, inside the centre square. Back to Langford from centre half forward. Kick into the pocket. McKenzie with the fist. And the ball dribbles out of play for a throw-in. 40 around from Essendon's goal. Kicking towards the city end of the MCG in this third term. Scores a level. They're doing a good job in this first three or four minutes just to play the game in their forward half. Of course, turnover, Zachy Merritt, then it was the unlikely contested mark. Probably claim it contested anyway that caused the turnover and you get it back deep inside 50 is a good result. Boundary throw in, both rucks miss it. Menzi knocks it forward straight to McKenzie. Kicks out of the defensive arc for Port Adelaide. Clean balls a couple on the wing. Spills through to Zerk Thatcher. Revesenden, hand pass to Ridley. Handball a little hot for McGrath. Now he's under pressure. Hand pass out wide to Hobbs. Little sidestep. Hand pass, weighted through to Zerk Thatcher. Handball back to Laverty. And now the switch. They'll try out the northern side. Back to Redmond. Redmond long kick up to the captain and Zach Merritt will mark. No, he doesn't. Spills that in front of the interchange. Follows up. Polly Farmer hand pass all the way back to Redmond. Short kick through to Kelly. And he marks forward at the wing. Scores level. Five gone third turn. He chips it short to Cordwell. And he'll get 50. Houston stepped over the mark. So Cordwell is going to be marked within scoring range. Marched, brother. I think he's claiming he didn't hear the whistle, but I think we all knew yeah. it went. Yeah. He's got nearly gone 20 metres, so. Hasn't that much wrong this yeah. year, Dan Houston, has he? But uh, that was a real brain trade. Third 50 for the Bombers, by the way. Yep, he zipped tonight. Yeah, well, they almost, it was almost the, the start of letting them off the hook in that first quarter that it was Jeremy Finlayson who, who gave away a 50 metre penalty led to the Bombers' first goal. So, a bit of undiscipline. But yeah, you're right, Beach. Really good start to this. Second half from the Bombers. Jai Caldwell, game number 50 coming up next week. 30 out. And he's missed it. To the right. That was a gettable shot. But it does give Essendon the lead. 5-9-39 to Port. 5-8-38. Six minutes played third term. Grants in AFL. Jai Caldwell, seven goals and nine for the season. And that point, as Jess said, puts Essendon in front. Fifth lead change. McKenzie... Marks the kick out, lays it off by hand to Burton. Heads down the boundary line, northern side. Butters in the contest. Just pushed off it by Snelling. Now he's involved, gets it from Durham. Snelling short kick to Cordwell, plays on immediately. Hand pass back to Snelling. Kicks deep inside 50. Langford marks. Uncontested right forward pocket. And he'll shoot on a 45 degree angle from about 15, 20 out. Well, he kind of forced it. It was good by Jai Caldwell, but kind of in playing on forced him to come back in the corridor because that's the way he was running and then to create that overlap handball snelling was evolved yeah initially. the numbers were there weren't yeah. they They're turning up yeah they're working harder at the moment so it wasn't deliberate to get it back through the corridor but it was a best case scenario and then just the inside out kick from snelling was a great uh, bit of vision and great finish to find langford langford makes no mistake through it goes and essendon with their biggest lead of the night it sits at seven points after as many minutes in the third term. The Bombers 6 9 45. Port Adelaide 5 8 38. Cole Langford with a couple for Essendon. Yeah, alarm, sorry, yeah, alarm bells, isn't it, for, for Port? 29 possessions to 10. So they, they just can't get their hands on the footy. This quarter, the power. And the Bombers have just been able to trap it in their front half and repeat entries and, and finally getting some reward for it. Such a beautiful kick for goal, isn't he, Cole Langford? If they get the ball in his hands. More often than not, but Will Snelling, who's a bit of an up and down year, but I, I think at his best, he's an important player in this Bombers team. Export Adelaide, actually. I don't think, think he played a game called Will Snelling. Yeah, yeah. He played a game for Port Adelaide. So yeah, back in 2016. Done, that's right. Yeah, done a great job. To forge a, a career for himself at the Bombers. On the restart, Hobbs brought to, brought to ground by Drew. We'll have a secondary ball up inside the centre circles. He's studying medicine too, I think. Oh. Will. Pretty sure he still is. Phillips palms it down back. to McKen uh, 
Perkins, rather, he gets the hand pass away, only as far as Farrell at centre half back for Port Flares. The hand pass out wide to Butters, who then gives it off to Rosie from the wing position, and he takes off on the outer side. Kicks Port Adelaide inside 50. Marshall in a one on one with Ridley, who punches it out of bounds for a throw in at right half forward for Port Adelaide. That shall Essendon by seven points, nine minutes played in this third term. Like most other footballers, I'm sure, boy. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, uh, it's Port Adelaide's first inside 50, to be honest, for the quarter. So let's get back to football, Corbin. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Essendon by seven points, eight and a half gone, third term. Boundary throwing. Dixon wins the hit out, doing the right work in the forward 50. Drew trickles a kick, but straight to Merritt. Hand pass went to Laverde and then back into uh, dispute. Laverde grabs it again, dives forward with the footy. Um, it's not buying what he sold and will have a ball up. And the Cricket Australia is still two down. Kawaja 73, Smith 28, lead 266 after the first hour of play on day four. Butters had it lost at Laverty. Threats a hand pass to Martin. Handball to Cordwell. Kicks out of the defensive arc and Langford arriving late takes the mark. Half back for Essendon. Switches it to Heppel at right half back. And passes to a running Zerk Thatcher. And then gives it off to Hobbs. Kicks down the line. Kelly's mark just forward of the interchange. Essendon by seven. They could be only two goals of this third term so far after Port Adelaide led by six at the half. Kelly sends it to a big packet half forward over the head of Wright. Out the back is Durham. Gets the hand pass out looking for Martin who has to turn tackle on Rosie. Ball spills loose. Picked up by Caldwell from half forward. To the top of the square. Wiedemann back with a fly. Couldn't reel in the mark. Picked up by Bonner of Port Adelaide who sends it to Powell Pepper on the outer side. What a year he's having, Sam Powell Pepper. A little quiet tonight, lays a hand pass out wide to uh, Finlayson. He's closed down back to Powell Pepper, who runs up over halfway for the power. Kicks to a two on one. Dixon, two bombers marks. The perfect kick to Dixon's advantage, and he's stretched up those arms overhead and has got it. 60 out, looks inside 50, turns it over. And Parrish with the intercept mark for the bombers. Essendon by seven points, ten and a half gone, third term. We've had five lead changes, all of them after quarter time. It's Essendon by seven at the moment. Parrish kicks long into the centre square, and Phillips, that's a good mark, in a one-on-one -on -one contest with Aaliyah. Ships it into the corridor to Parrish, who kept running. He's marked defensive side of halfway. Hand passes off to Merritt, who swings the hand pass out to Durham on the members' wing. Bullets are passed to half forward. Cordwell presents and takes the mark, plays on, gives it to Durham from half forward, bangs it long to a dangerous position right in the contest, gets out the back. And McKenzie takes the intercept grab for Port Adelaide in the last line of defence and chips short to Houston. Another good build-up by the Bombers, though. Really dangerous. Get the ball back through the middle. It's Phillips with a contested mark, which just opens up the whole game. Zachy Merritt involved. A long kick from Farrell out towards half-back. Spills down to Ridley, overruns it, and Burn Jones inadvertently soccers it out of bounds. Just kept the ball in motion, didn't they? Just played on. And at the moment, it's work rate. They're, they're turning up, so there's always the outlet number there, which is really noticeable in what's been reasonably sort of helped the scale of the quarter. Bombers just working a bit harder than the power at the moment. Dylan Shield and Jace Berger in the two subs. Neither of them used so far. Boundary throw in. Phillips hits the deck. Finlayson wins the hit out. Down to Rosie for Port. Hand pass to Houston. Hot hands through to Butters. Hand pass in the middle of the ground for Boak as a windy. Trying to soccer it off the deck. Spills down towards uh, Boak's advantage again. Hand pass went to Houston. He turns it over. And the Bombers whack it back the other way through Ridley. Up to the wing. And Rosie takes the intercept mark. Back with Port Adelaide. Northern wing. Bombers by seven points. 12 gone. Third turn. Rosie chips in board to Burton, who then kicks it further afield to Houston inside the centre square. Kicks it into the pocket. Horn Francis charges out, couldn't complete the mark, picked up by Ridley for Essendon, gives it to Stringer, close to the boundary line. Kicks in board to a contest, it's off hands, brought to ground for Layson. Has gotten into a bit of trouble, just got the kick away to Burton, who then kicks Port Adelaide inside forward 50. Redmond got hands to it, spills to Horn Francis. He gives it to Narco, 45 out, kicks a low ball to Dixon. He marks 35 out, slight angle to the left. I think the Bombers supporters feel like they're hard done by with that tackle on Finlayson, which looked like he dropped the ball and then 
bounced back up to him and then he found a boot to get to his opponent. So a really smart kick from Narkle there with not much space. Charlie Dixon, game number 200 for him coming up next week. It's a goal in the opening quarter. He has absolutely sprayed that. The crowd tells the story across the face and then rush through for a behind. To the delight of the Essendon fans, they lead by six points. Essendon 6-9-45 to Port Adelaide, 5-9-39. 14 played third term. Good the first scoring shot for Port Adelaide. Uh, that's the quarter, yep. yep. He's that's rushed it. in the end. Redman takes some ground and then goes long to the wing. Both Wiedemann and Wright in the pack, but ends up in the hands of Finlayson. Hand pass to Wines, backs himself in, jinking run, kicks, smothered by Durham, spills back to Wines. Hand pass to Butters, handball inside 50. Bombers with numbers around it, and Zerk Thatcher extracts it. Handball to McGrath, hand pass to Wright. He just kicks in hope down the wing. Stringer's got to go. Wiedemann also in the pack. Wiedemann halves the contest. Inadvertently sockers it forward. Burton wants the boundary line, finds it. And a throw in right on halfway. Members wing. Bombers lead it by six. Karen Peterson on the boundary. Yeah, guys, I just want to let you know the wind has picked up quite considerably, favouring Essendon. So kicking towards the city end of the ground. They're actually very, very swirly at ground level right now. Thanks, Kez. Hopefully no rain on its way. Essendon by six points here in the third quarter from the throw-in. Wiedemann wins it, gives it to Durham. And now to Parrish, kicking boards, a good one. Hits Martin on the chest inside the centre square. Kicks looking for Langford in the pocket. Knocked away from him out the back is a lear for Port Adelaide. Cool, calm and collected. And his kick finds Narkel at centre-half back. He wants to switch play and it's a good kick. Finds Farrell. Has some room to move on the members wing. Lovely delivery to Butters, who has space at half forward. Takes off, has a bounce, runs inside 50. A second bounce, now he's caught, but he was caught high. Just as he was tackled by Hobbs and McGrath as well. And instead of it being a free kick to Essendon, it's now a shot at goal to Butters for 40 out. I think when they see you know, the replay, the Bombers supporters, even though in the moment they were aggrieved, and in the end, it was sort of Butters' momentum falling forward. Didn't really duck, did he? No, that, that, that caught the loose tackle from Andy McGrath. So He's listed, by the way, at 181 centimetres. Oh, he must have his studs on, I reckon. He gets, yeah. he gets low, too. He's a, yeah, he's a low runner, so he's hard to tackle. So this to draw scores level for the second time in this quarter. Zach Butters steers it through. His first of the night, and we're all locked up again at the G. 6-9 apiece, 6-9-45 apiece after 16 minutes in the third. I think you bought the rain as well, Jess. You mentioned there's hopefully there's no rain on the way, and you've spoken it into existence. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> just got the ability, hasn't he, just to bob up in the right areas. But as really smart leader of the play, finds himself in space. We know he's a terrific contested inside player, but his ability to... And in that instance, it was just to get ahead of the play, wasn't it? Just to pop out in the space ahead of the play and, and read the turnover. And in the end, he probably got a little bit lucky because he, he took a second bounce, which he didn't need to take, and, and drew the pressure in. It was a good chase. I think it was from Hobbs from behind, which allowed McGrath to come in from the side. But, you know, it was certainly a free kick there. Almost took his head off. Six straight games. He's kicked a goal in now. Zach Butters leading the ABC Footballer of the Year after 16 rounds. Out of the middle, Finlayson. Oh, hooks a kick on the outside of the boot. Hobbs and Butters bang bodies. Ball spits down to McGrath. Hurry kick forward and Wiedemann marks. Front edge of the centre square. Looks inside 50. Stringer has it. Left out forward just inside the boundary line. 35 out. Looking dangerous, the Bombers, when they do go forward. It's a bit of a nothing kick from Andy McGrath that found Wiedemann, but Wiedemann playing in front was first to move. And then when they able to move the ball with speed, their forwards are looking very, very dangerous. Jake Stringer. Goals in 12 of his last 13 games. Delayed start to the season. He's going to go with a drop pump as he often does. Tight angle in the rain. The waterproof package. Through it goes. And Essendon are back in front by that kick. 18 gone, third term. 7 9 51. Port Adelaide, 6 9 45. The Dons by goal as these two teams continue to juke it out at the G.
and that rain. It's coming. I just looked Here at the radar. There's absolutely <laughs> nothing on it. Ball uh, movement has been good, hasn't it, this quarter, Beach? And, and, and well, it'll be interesting now. I mean, they've shown a, a real tendency to play on and use overlap handball. Now, with the rain coming down, do they have to resort back a bit to more taking the territory and, and not overusing the footy? We'll see which team's quicker to adapt to these conditions. But, yeah, been really impressed the way they've come out in this second half, the Bombers. And if it weren't for that free kick to, to, to Butters, yeah, they've been absolutely all over them this quarter. Port Adelaide by five at quarter time, by six at the half, and it's now the Bombers by six, and we're back in the middle. As the rain tumbles at the G, no winner from the centre bounce, and we'll do it all again. Three goals to one in this third quarter to Essendon. Dixon in ruck for Port Adelaide. Burn Jones has a fumble picked up by Horn Francis. He's kicked it straight into Hobbs, who jams it forward to centre half forward. It's off hands. Alir is there for Port Adelaide. He was tackled and didn't dispose of it correctly, so it's going to be a free kick to Jake Stringer at centre-half forward. Bombers are out then too, even if it wasn't a free kick. Should have taken the advantage and would have ran into an open goal from 30 metres, but good contest from Wiedemann. Follow-up, Jake Stringer with the pressure. Incorrect disposal from the Lear. That's what he can do, isn't it? I mean, look at the stat sheet, isn't it? A massive night. It's be possession eight, but he can burst and kick this a big, big moment. moment if anyone's capable Jake Stringer is on this occasion he's hooked it to the left for a minor Essendon by 7 7 10 52 leading Port Adelaide 6 9 45 20 play third term in Grandson AFL England are now trying the short ball theory on the Australians an hour and 10 minutes <laughs> into the day on day four Bowling 125 clicks. Short <laughs> balls. It's not going to cause too much trouble, is it? The Aussies still two down. The lead is 274 now for the Australians. Still Kawaja and Smith at the crease. A long kick out of defence from Farrell. Lands in the lap of Redmond, who marks logo broadcast wing. The Bombers win some territory battle here. They keep it in their front half. Long kick to the top of the goal square. Spills out the back of the pack. Hurried kick from Farrell out to half back for Port. Narkle underneath it. Can't take the chest mark as the rain continues to fall. Half forward for the Bombers. Merritt to Langford. Handball away to Redmond. High up and under inside the forward pocket. They come from all directions. Bergman tries to kill it out of play. Drew then keeps it alive. Oh, hand pass to Houston. Kicks along the boundary line. Kicks it out on the full. Deliberate, says the umpire, off the bird of Ollie Wines. And it'll be a free kick for Zach Merritt, his opposing captain. Oh, he's just going to poke it short. Against the boundary line, finds Parrish. And he has it a little closer to goal. Still tight angle against the fence, right half forward. This is a sweeping shower right across the G. You can visibly see the rain falling in the floodlights. Yeah. Well, this will take his absolute best. He's got a bit of a left to right on his kick beach, so that'll, that'll suit him. Drop punt. Steps inside the field of play. His kick travels goalward. It's across the face and misses out the left. The Bombers with momentum here. They lead by eight points. Time on third term. Essendon 7-11. Port Adelaide 6-9. Burton with the kick in for Port Adelaide. Finds Rosie Short who takes off and sends... It long to the outer wing. Finlayson in the pack brought it to ground. Phillips is there for Essendon. Has a fumble. Now Martin has a go. Collects nicely. His hand pass a little too wide for Guelphie. And Bergman's happy to see it over for a throw-in. Centre wing position on the outer side. Essendon by eight points. 22 played third term on Grandson AFL. Jess Webster and Corbin Middlemass calling the action this evening. Luke Ball and Brennan Goddard, your experts. And Karen Peterson is out in the rain on the boundary for us this evening. Ball flung back into play. Phillips palms it down. Picked up by Bergman. He hacks it forward. It's off hands. Out the back is Ooh. Bogue trying to go off the deck. Is that kicking in danger? No, says the umpire. It's picked up by Marshall who sends it into the pocket for Port Adelaide. Off hands. Spills to Martin of Essendon. His kick out of defence lands on the chest of Heppel who is a lovely kick and finds Guelphy on the wing. Guelphy marks taken to ground by Aaliyah. Fans wanted 50, not forthcoming. Hand pass in the corridor for Perkins. This is proper driving rain now as Perkins across the half forward flank. Menzi hits up. Hand pass to Snelling. Right peg kicks deep. Wiedemann caught at the back. Houston drops a chest mark with a wet footy. Able to follow up. 
Hands it out to Williams. Dangerous kicks, a good one. Finds Narkle. He spills a chest mark cold. Redmond's onto it for the Bombers. There's a whistle and a free kick. It's going the Bombers' way. I think did he pay holding the ball in the end? It's coming back to Ben Hobbs. Or a throw, trying to usher it out off the deck. Narkle. Not taking anything for granted here. Even the chest mark. Just spend that extra second yeah. over the footy. Unexpected downpour at the G. Eight-point lead for the Bombers. Hobbs inside 50. They all fly for it. No mark. The footy like a cake of soap. Comes down to Langford. Hamper straight into Guelphie's bonds. Ricochets to Wines. He kicks out wide. And Narkel and Durham in the end. Harvard over the boundary line. So a throw in 60 out from the Bombers goal. And the community service announcement on the big screen. Due to wet weather, please watch your step and stay safe. As rain falls at the G. The Dons by eight. Good advice. <laughs> Ball back into play. Dixon in front position and Rock palms it down straight to Hobbs of Essendon. He gets it to Stringer. Now to Perkins. Chips it into the pocket. Lanes it on the lead. Geez, they're seriously on top, aren't they, Bob? Yep. It's just from that last bit of play, which they managed to, I guess, butcher it in a sense. They had weed him on the far side, running it into an open goal, but just that contest from Malia that brought Wolfie to ground. Wasn't able to see him, but they're, they're streaming forward with numbers and work rate to get to next the next contest it's really been a standout since the rain is coming down and generally ball as we know in wet weather that's generally what it all takes your ability to keep working in this contest and to outnumber at the contest because you can't rely on guys being so clean with the ball Langford tough shot from the boundary almost snuck at home but it is a minor score Essendon by 9 7 12 54 to Port Adelaide 6 9 45 25 played third term on Grandson AFL 30 more possessions for the quarter Again, in these conditions, it's just, just work right. Yes, at the contest, but just outnumbering. All things going well for the Bombers at the moment. Burton to Rosie, hands it back to Burton. Long kick up into the front half. Ridley tries to spoil it away. Spills to Narkel, knocks it away to Vicentini. Hand pass through to Wine. Short kick, centre half forward. Narkel's got it. And that's one way to get it up into the front half. The raking boot of Ryan Burton and the run after the kick out. Oh, Narkel goes short. The umpire's going to say it's not 15. Mark taken by Houston. Ball comes out in the tackle. Parrish bangs it to a one-on-one -on, -one on the wing. It's Stringer and Aaliyah. Stringer gets a kind bounce. Boat comes to lend a hand. Lays the tackle. Ball spits out. Merritt for Essendon in the driving rain on the outer wing. Hand pass away to Snelling. Feeds it forward to Stringer. His hand pass along the boundary line trickles out of play. And a boundary throw-in. It is bucketing down here at the G. As you said, Bates, what wasn't on the radar, and yet it no, is. I think it just Ooh, builds up over the great Port Phillip Bay. Mm. Out of nowhere. That was a great example then. There was a one-on-one -on -one contest out on the wing. The next player out there, Zach Merritt. And just more and more Essendon jumpers in the frame, in the screen at the moment in Port. Essendon by nine. Shallow throw-in. Parrish close to the line. Keeps it alive to Merritt. His kick smothered by Houston, and it ricochets out of play for another throw-in on the outer side wing. Essendon by nine. 26 gone now in this third term. It's been a great quarter from Essendon. Three goals to one after Port Adelaide led by six at half-time. Essendon trying to break Port Adelaide's club record 11-game winning streak. Ball back into play. Out the back is Hobbs. Gets Brute to ball towards half-forward. Langford diving mark. Takes the grab, 50 out from goal. Wants to move it forward, kicks into the pocket, but Bergman takes the intercepting grab for Port Adelaide. Bergman, short kick back inside to Butters. He looks out of the defensive arc and finds Houston in the centre square for Port Adelaide. Essendon by nine points, their biggest lead of the match, 27 gone in the third term. He goes wide to Butters, he's got it again. Short kick to his mate, Rosie. 28 minutes travelled, third term. Rosie goes on a run from the logo southern wing. High kick inside 50, slips through a few hands. Oh, through to Kelly's tackle, dispossessed by Horn Francis. Now he's locked up. Pack forms around him. McEntee knocks it out. Still forward pocket for Port Essendon win it back. Snelling, hand pass away to Wright. Wright dumps a kick out of the defensive 50. Stringer marks in front of Butters. And Jake Stringer has it half back for Essendon. In the waning moments of the third term, the Bombers by nine. Intent to just hold it up. Jake Stringer now called to play on. So he'll wind up and kick it long down the line to a contest. Burton with the fist for Port. It goes out of play for a throw in at left half forward for Essendon. 
They lead by nine. So tip down towards three-quarter time. The rain is still continuing to fall here at the MCG. Vicentini, who just joined us, the late inclusion. He's in ruck against Peter Wright. The umpire spins the ball back into play. Wright palms it down. Parrish chasing after it. It's picked up by Hobbs. His hand pass missed Parrish. And he fights for it with Butters. Close to the line, picked up by Merritt. Siren beats them all. So three-quarter time here at the MCG. Essendon in the box seat for perhaps... An upset win here against Port Adelaide. They lead 7-12-54, Port 6-9-45. And goal kickers for Essendon. Two to Kyle Langford and Matt Guelphy in singles. Two, Laverde, Stringer and Martin. And for Port Adelaide, two to Connor Rosie in singles. To Farrell, Butters, Dixon and Narkle. There's been a wicket at Lords too. So it was uh, caught by the sub uh, with Stuart Broad. Picking up the wicket, so the short ball's paid off. Digging one into Usman Kawaja. He was caught hooking down to fine leg. So Kawaja out for 77. The Australians now three for 187. And the important number is the lead. So the Aussies effectively three for 278. So 278 the lead with Kawaja out for 77 just after drinks. The morning session of day four. Game on here at the G. It is Essendon by nine points as the rain continues. The thoughts of Luke Ball and Brendan Goddard in just a moment on ABC Radio, Sport Digital and through the Listen app. This is Grandstand AFL. Gruen is back for a brand new season. Analyzing advertising, utilizing AI, CGI, GPT on your ABC. What the? Engaging enhanced Will Anderson technology. Unsubscribe. It's the future. future. Real intelligence, artificially enhanced. It's already it's here. here. No actors, AI or actual were harmed during the making of this promo. It makes me feel so inhuman. Gruen, Wednesday nights on ABC TV and streaming on ABC iView. Grandstand AFL. AFL. Now streaming every match on the ABC Listen app. Look for the AFL button. Decides to pump it long to a big pack at the top of the square. Aaliyah almost uncontested in the end. Rises high, reels in the mark. Oh, and he's turned it over. He wanted to chip short to Houston, but instead coming across is Menzi who chips in board to Guelphy. Wow. Matt Guelphy kicked a goal in the opening quarter. This to draw scores level. He steers it through. And we're all tied up at the G. Gets it from Durham. Snelling short kick to Cordwell. Plays on immediately. Hand pass back to Snelling. Kicks deep inside 50. Langford marks. Uncontested right forward pocket. Langford makes no mistake. Through it goes. And Essendon with their biggest lead of the night. It's hits at seven points. Lovely delivery to Butters who has space at half forward. Takes off. Has a bounce. Runs inside 50. Second bounce. Now he's caught. But he was caught by. This to draw scores level for the second time in this quarter. Zach Butters steers it through. Looks inside 50. Stringer has it left out forward just inside the boundary line. 35 out. He's going to go with the drop punt as he often does. Tight angle in the rain. The waterproof package. Sure it goes. And Essendon are back in front by that kick. The 2023 AFL season. On radio. ABC Sport Digital. And now streaming on the ABC Listen app. The driving rain at the MCG. In the end, it was a dominant quarter by the Bombers, and yet they lead by only nine points as we turn for home. So Essendon 7-12, Port Adelaide 6-9. So a nine-point lead for Essendon at three-quarter time. The thoughts of Brendan Goddard and Luke Ball on Grandstand AFL. Yeah, well, first half of that quarter before the rain come, it was still Essendon uh, playing the game in their forward half, locking in. The forward pressure was great, forcing Port Adelaide to dump kick it out of defence, and the defenders were set up really well behind the ball. So it was pretty simple footy, uh, and their dominance was built off the back of defence. And then as the, came, as the rain came down, they got a little bit more slippery again. Their ability to outwork and their, their work rate and their, their ability to outnumber at the next contest in slippery conditions. I made mention uh, when the rain did come how important that is because you can't rely on then, you know, a 2v2 or, or even, you know, a 3v3 or having the outnumber already is going to guarantee that you win the ball like it probably would in, in dry conditions. So then you have to be smarter with your decisions. You can't afford to really, I guess, make... Uh, or make a decision to go forward to the footy when we look like winning because the odds are someone's going to make a mistake 
before it actually gets to you. So their ability to, 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 to go and outnumber at the next contest and Paulie highlight a situation perfectly on the far side. When a contested kick came out of D50 for Essendon, and Jake Stringer made the contest, but the first guy was over Zach Merritt and then Snelling was the next to arrive. So what was a 1v1, and they weren't unattended, there was someone with Zachy Merritt, but it quickly became a 3v2, which is going to give you the best chance continually. You keep doing that when it's in wet, uh, wet conditions, slippery, consistently, and you're going, to, you're, going to win, you're going to win that war, and you're going, to, you're going to win the footy and go forward. So we know how hard it is when it's wet and slippery to score. So the ability to take opportunities is going to be really important, which Essendon did on a number of occasions, and they had... What the, they kicked four points that quarter, so I think they had seven shots on goal. Is that correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. But they had great opportunity in Port Adelaide. And then... And Essendon would be really happy. Yeah, seven shots, seven shots to two. Yep. yep. Yeah, and you're right, spot on. And that's the order of the of the, of the the last thirty minutes, isn't it? Whoever's willing to roll the sleeves up, get to work. You know, the, the ground's going to be soggier, obviously. Work harder, outnumber at the contest, surge the ball forward. You know, nothing, no, no overuse with hands. Take, you know, when the game's going to open up anyway. So, take the yards, lock it in that front half. The team, and we've seen both teams being able to do that across the first three quarters, but the team that's able to do that for the longest in this quarter. And I think, you, you, I mean, you do feel that, that Phillips, and we look down, our Finn Lace is going to start in the ruck. Uh, Phillips can have a say in this quarter. I'd love to see him just belt the board forward. No, no don't get too cute around clearances when the, in these conditions. Belt the ball forward, take yards, and outnumber at the contest. How about the short ball paying off for England? So they got oh Kawaja God. out for 77, caught by Matthew Potts, the sub off Broad's bowling, so the lead was 278. They added three more to the scores, the Australians, before Steve Smith out pulling again. Down the deep backward square off a short ball from Josh Tung. Caught, rather, caught by Crawley out for 34. Yeah, rather than just trying to hit the six, it just trying six. to guide it That's down it. there. But uh, sub's been made for Essendon, so we'll, we'll get Dylan there. Shields on, and I'm not sure who this sub uh, is. Karen is. Peterson, Kes. Yeah, Kes. Menzies for Essendon's come off, and Burgoyne on for uh, for the Port Adelaide as well. I think the unlucky guy is Vincentini in his first game. Thanks, Kes. So double sub, Essendon by nine points. Burgoyne and Shiel into the game. The Aussies losing two quick wickets, so four down, a lead of 281. Port work it out the half forward. Burn Jones soccers it forward, soccers it out of play. Um, says it's all OK, and a boundary throw in as the rain continues. He's good, dude. He's a good person to inject into the game, doing shield too. This is perfect for him. He can have a real crack at this. Uh, he, at his best, he's, he's contest speed to contest. Yeah, speed out number. Long kick, so it's, uh, it's a nice technical sub for the Bombers. I think for the youngster too, just the conditions have probably you know, sealed his fate in the end. And he's around this contest at the moment. It spills to Merritt, who hacks it forward into the centre square. Over the head of Langford in a one-on-one -on -one with Bergman. Gets out the back to Aaliyah, who ducked the head. Tackled by Wright, gets the hand pass away. Now it's on the wing. Burgoyne, the sub, has a fumble. Shiel also has a fumble. Also the sub, picked up by Butters of Port Adelaide. He kicks the centre half forward. Jeremy Finlayson is all alone at the top of the arc. He'll go back. Not a lot of options forward of the ball at the moment. Looks like he might fancy his chances from long range. Right, this will give us a bit of a tell on how wet that footy is. We're well, I mean, only a minute and a bit into the quarter, so that would have been a, a dry footy to start with because certainly at his best, he's got the length here, Jeremy Finlayson. This is a big kick for Port Adelaide to start the last. They trail by nine. Finlayson from 55. Wax it. That is a big goal to Jeremy Finlayson and a big goal to Port Adelaide. Margin is back to three. Essendon, 7 12 54 to Port Adelaide, 7 9 51. Two minutes played, final term on Grandson AFL. Well, the good thing is that there's six footies. So they all can't be wet. So I'm <laughs> assuming the umpire's got to drive one. We're back in the day, Bully. Do we only use one footy yeah, in our career for the whole game? Yeah. So that, right. that footy would be probably wet and heavy at the and minute. So by now too, though. It would be as poor yeah, as Yeah, it would be kicked in. That's yeah. the only downfall, isn't it? But teams now, it's a Kilda, just to go off. How did he tap. find himself in so much space? Did yeah, he... That's a bit concerning because I did look forward. So there's no talk. Because I understand Phillips, get, you get caught out right, ball watching. That was a clear example of why you can't ball watch. But no defender around him actually called him back, screamed at him. Pretty hard to miss, isn't he? When Finlayson's standing... Yeah. You know, in about a 30 metre space by himself. 
Back to a three-point game. Phillips wins the hit out, but his opposing Reitman Finlayson grabs the footy to goal kicker. Spirals one to centre half forward. Clean bowls a couple. Dixon clever hooks it over his head. Live footy forward 50 for Port. Boat sits on top of it. Tunnel ball knocks it out back, but straight to Redman. And Redman can rebound out of defensive 50. Kicks into open space. Southern wing. Farrell beats Perkins to the footy for Port. Short kick to Butters. This is when he really lifts in the rain with the game on the line as he darts out to his right and Butters kicks it inside the forward 50. Looking for a mark. Dixon hands to it. Can't hang on. And off a sequence of hands, it hits Zach Merritt who kicks to a one-on-one at half back. Fight on for the footy here. Houston along with Guelphy. Both of them trying to soccer it away from one another. Guelphy goes to ground, knocks it out wide to Langford. He soccers it further afield. Close to the boundary line in the end, it gets out. And a throw in right on halfway, just repeating what Kez told us. So, subs been made. Shield in the game for Menzi and Jace Burgoyne in the game for Vicentini, the debutante. It was the late inclusion for Lysett, who came out in a warm up with a knee complaint. Finlayson and Phillips in rock. Phillips palms it down straight to Houston. He gives it to Finlayson. Now to Drew. Another looping hand pass to Burton, who gives it off to Farrell in the middle of the MCG. The long kick to full forward. Zach Thatcher in front got hands to it. Couldn't complete the mark. Then chases after it close to the goal line. Dixon goes to ground. So does Zerk Thatcher. And eventually the ball spills out of bounds for a throw in next to the right behind post. Port Adelaide into attack. They trail Essendon by three points after five minutes in this final. Uh, this is going to go out to Andrew Phillips. Good belt the ball forward. That's twice now. He's at the clear ruck contest version. He's just too cute with the hit out. And Finn Lason's actually been the one that's got the clearance. Wet conditions. Take the yards. Belt it forward 20 metres. Wet with a footy the last 20 minutes or so. Phillips wins the hit out. Butters picks it up around his ankles. Hand pass goes back to Bonner. Forward pocket. Hooks a kick. Top of the goal square. Burgoyne in it. Zerk Thatcher knocks it away. Drew has it. Tackled by Merritt. Great desperation stuff. Ball comes out to Phillips of the Bombers. Trickles a kick to half back. Farrell there for Port to trap it inside 50. Hands it to Burgoyne. Kicks across the arc. Burton the target, can't collect, paddles it out in front, becomes tackler on Kelly. And Kelly for the Bombers, hands it to oh, Parry. She right. threw it. It's against Jake Kelly for a throw. Tried to desperately get it out in the wet conditions. Caught up in the tackle. Ball came out, umpire right on the scene, and a free kick for Port Adelaide at left half forward. And it'll be Burton who'll be rewarded. Yeah, in good hands too. Didn't quite get a look at it, Beach. We'll get another look at here on the replay. For oh. Red Hot, he's uh, no. good eyes. The umpire moves right there, but it almost looked like it was knocked out of his hands, didn't it? So, might be a bit of a lucky break here for Port. The Dons have dominated the second half, and yet Burton has the lead on his boot. He swings it around, straight through it goes off Ryan Burton's right foot, and Port Adelaide now lead. A three point advantage six minutes into the final term. Port 8 9 57, Essendon 7 12 54. Grandstand AFL lead change number six. Brendan Goddard and Luke Ball. Yeah, well, it's a game of momentum, isn't it? So, Port Adelaide, or Essendon last quarter probably didn't capitalise enough on their dominance. Saying that, Port Adelaide probably say the same thing in the first quarter. And now, Port Adelaide now got the momentum back, able to hit the scoreboard on a number of occasions early in this fourth quarter. So, through nothing really special, is it? They set up well again, got the ball deep inside 50. Pressure was good. Essendon lose a bit of structure in front of the ball with their forwards because they're getting deep or back so deep to try and defend that deep entry. Back in the middle, Phillips palmed it down to Finlayson, the opposing ruck, who then whacks it down. It's picked up by Durham on the edge of the centre square. Kicks long to half forward over the head of Snelling. Out the back is Houston for Port Adelaide. Gets the hand pass out. No, happy to see it over the line is Burton, the goal kicker. So throwing it left half forward for Essendon. And the trail Port Adelaide by three points after the power kick. The first two goals of this final term. Oh, it's Phillips down to Finlayson again. He's got to think of something a bit different here, Andy Phillips. Well, Power Pepper has actually come up to the stoppage as a forward and now sitting off the back of it and trying to blitz through the stoppage to get a bit of momentum. Phillips puts his palm through the head out and in the end, Horn Francis and... Merritt share it over the line, so throw in again, half forward for the Bombers, 70 out. And it's actually predictable. Right? Just, that you're right, you're spot on. So they, you know, they've recognised their ruck, they're down in the ruck, so they've, they've brought the extra number up, port to the stoppage. So he's, he's going to charge through, though, so the ball's got to go Essendon's way. 
So then he has to turn around. Makes Can't run on momentum. His, his opponent's sitting just inside the corridor, so he's got to be in a position, I think, just to be able to catch him when he comes through the front of that stoppage. The Rucks have it. In the end, Phillips down to uh, a by hand to Hobbs. Kicks inside 50. Port mop it up. Williams, hand pass out wide to Rosie. Has it at half back for the power. Kicks long down the line to a one-on-one. -on -one. Dixon against Laverde. It gets out the back to Hairball, who went to ground. McEntee tackled him. Ball squirts out the back to Dixon. Gets boot to ball and then he's nudged off of it. Kelly picks it up. His hand pass goes through the legs of Redmond. Now McEntee has a go. He gets the hand pass out straight to Heppel. He gives it to Kelly. He jams it on the boot down the line. A Wiedemann couldn't complete the mark. Gets out the back to Rosie. Hand passes inboard to Horn Francis. He kicks Port Adelaide inside the arc. It's knocked away from Marshall. Shield coming one way, but almost got tangled up with his teammate Laverde. They then share a couple of hand passes. He gets it out to Phillips from centre half back. He's got to be quick and get it out. He does. Kicks to Wiedemann on the wing in a one-on-one -on -one against Burton who brought it to ground. It gets out the back to Snelling. He has some room in front of the interchange gates. Pokes it forward to Peter Wright. It slips out the back past him to Aaliyah who's tackled by Merritt and brought to ground. Holding the ball is the core free kick acid in a left half forward. I shouldn't see what happened, but I saw the transition of the Port Adelaide forwards. They're actually struggling, struggling to get up the ground, fill space, help defend. So Essendon's work rate getting on top of it, Port Adelaide. Zach Merrick oh. kicks it to the top of the square where Wiedemann marks uncontested. There's a miscommunication from the Port Adelaide defence. And this shot at goal from Sam Wiedemann can potentially put them back in front. Great tackle, wasn't it? Oh, great tackle. What a year he's having. The Essendon fans and the members too on their feet. Yeah. Lauding Zach Merritt as he hits the bench. Yeah. And that beautiful kick too, just to, to spot that little pocket of space. Sam Wiedemann to lead into. And this is what you're in the team for, Sammy. To restore the lead for Essendon. He sprayed it left for a minor. Chance gone begging for the Bombers. Port Adelaide by two. 8 9 57 plays Essendon, 7 13 55, 10 played final term. It's the fifth straight game he hasn't kicked a goal in, Sam Wiedemann. And that was a gift there. But he's left out there, port by a couple, as Jess mentioned. Williams marks the kick out, goes long to the wing, carries Dixon, hand on it from Kelly. Ball spills back inboard. Dixon follows up. Sockers it inside. Phillips goes to Shepard. McGrath has a fumble. Sockers it forward to Cordwell. Kicks a high up and under across the centre square. Oh, oh, right arrives late, but great courage. Farrell stands in front of him, takes the intercept mark. Been superb. Kay Farrell, 23rd possession this one. 12 of those contested. 12 intercept uh, possessions and nine score involvements. And that left foot is a weapon as he kicks to centre half forward. Uh, or spills through to Zerk Thatcher. Rides a hip and shoulder from Pau Pepper. Ball spits out. Marshall hands it away. Kick trickles goalward from Burn Jones. He's offline. It's a behind. So the only two goals of this final term have both gone to the power. And the greasy conditions, although the rain has halted, it's the power by three after trailing by nine at three-quarter time. 11 gone, final term, power by three. It's interesting here again, Court, as you're onto this one. So he's, he's had the wind knocked out of him, Zerk Thatcher. The, the game stopped. And yeah. The, yeah, the doctor's come out. Or... He's going to stay out there. Yep. He, he was going to say he ran into Sam Powell Pepper. He's one bloke you do not want to run into with a full head of steam. McGrath with a long kick into the centre square. Off hands. Houston picks it up for Port Adelaide. Jams it on the boot. Boke, it's in a half forward. Knocked away from him. Picked up by Powell Pepper. Powell Pepper tried to shrug a couple of would-be tacklers. Ball is locked up at centre half forward for Port. It's like a refrigerator with a head. Powell Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> ben Layson palms it down. Straight to Martin, who gets boot to ball. High up and under to Snelling. It's off hands. Snelling goes again. Now Shield has a go. Couldn't find his boot. Ball still alive. Snelling picks it up at centre half back, dribbles it down the line, but it's all Port Adelaide. Picked up by Williams, who can send it back to centre half forward to a contest. It gets out the back to Powell Pepper, who dribbles it towards goal as he got the right bounce just to the right hand side for a minor score. Port Adelaide by four points. 8 11 58 to the Bombers, 7 13 55. 12 played, final term. Game on the line here in this quarter and Port Adelaide started the final term much better than the Bombers as Ridley brings it into McGrath. Hand pass back to Ridley. He's kicked it out on the full. Trying to come out of the front half. Port win it back on halfway. Only two goals of the final term in the wet, greasy conditions to the power. They lead it by four. 
Six lead changes tonight overall. Houston goes long inside 50. Hands to it to Mark Pay. Juggled effort to Laverty. The Dons with it, centre half back. Long way from home, the goals at the punt road end. Kicks a high ball, tough one to mark in these conditions to Perkins. Carries over his head, pack forms behind him. Up circles, says I'll have it. Australia is still four down in the cricket, approaching lunch on a fourth day. The lead is 2-8-3. Smith out for 34, Kawaja for 77. Restart on the wing. Wiedemann knocks it down. Parrish trying to extract it. Got a hand pass out. Houston sits on top of it. Pack forms around him. Ball comes out. Snelling's caught by Bonner and we'll have a ball up again. Still on the wing, member side. Port by four. Game on the line. 13 and a half gone, final term. And Layson takes it out of the rock. Missed his boot. And Bonner laying a tackle to force a stoppage on the wing. Getting up off the bottom of the pack is McGrath. And Layson and Wiedemann tangle in ruck. It spills to Francis, who shrugs the tackle once. Does he get around twice? He does. Snelling applying the pressure to Bonner, who kicks Port Adelaide inside forward 50, but he's all directed out of bounds for a throw in next to the right behind post. The power by four. 14 gone final term. Let's get downstairs to Karen Peterson. Well called by BJ before. I've just been watching Pal Pepper. He has been an absolute man mountain, just steamrolling through every contest and stoppage that's been. He's on his hands and knees at the moment. He's absolutely cooked, but putting a lot of work in. Thanks, Kez. Four-point lead for the power. Boundary throw in next to the behind post. Forward 50 stoppage for Port. Bouncing around like a pinball. And a bunch of players in the end. Ridley grabs it. He's tackled, dispossessed. McEntee's got it. They've got him. A ball up, 15 out, right in front of the power goal. Anxious moments for the Bombers. The power... Riding a bit of momentum here. Dixon wins it down. Corwell got the hand pass out off his knees. Guelphy trying to get the clean pick up. Can't. Ball bobbles out. Center half forward for Port Horn Francis. Can't quite collect. He's tackled. Pack forms around him up. Says I'll have it. 40 meters out from the power goal at the city end. Center half forward. Port by four. Good contest, isn't it? Dixon in rock, palms it down, winds over on it. Cordwell has a fumble, spills to Wiedemann. He jams it on the boot inside the centre square, but it's a turnover. Williams in position A for Port. 70 out from goal. They lead by four points. They've kicked the only two goals of this final term. Williams long to a big pack. Off hands. Pal Pepper to Rosie. Superb finish from the pocket for his third. And Port Adelaide's lead is out to 10 points in this final quarter. 9-11-65 to the Bombers, 7-13-55. 16 played final term on Granson AFL. Luke Ball and Brendan Goddard. It's got the pin, haven't they? Beige, it was, it's, it was the f- first quarter all over again. 11 inside 50s to two. And it was Williams again with the intercept mark. Houston, Farrell, all prominent this quarter. Just pumping the ball back. Nothing cute. I like take the yards, use your long leg, pumping the ball back into a dangerous spot. Pal Pepper, he, he has he has had an impact, hasn't he? He hasn't had a heap of the footy this quarter, but he's in the screen a lot. That time it was a lovely crumb and quick give to Rosie, who was in too much space, really, wasn't he, for uh, the Bombers coaching staff point of view. And he doesn't miss him from there. So a little bit of breathing space for the power. Can the Bombers respond? Trail by nine at three-quarter time. Port, they lead it by 10 now. What a huge turnaround in the first 15 minutes of this final term with the game on the line. Phillips wins it down to Merritt. Hurried kick forward. Shield collects, tackled, lost it. Bonner grabs the footy. Hand pass away to Farrell. Gives it back to Bonner. Still on half back. The lefty hooks a kick in the middle of the ground. Redmond at the drop. Hugs it to his chest. Right on halfway has it for Essendon. And they come again. Long kick deep forward. Aaliyah and right. Aaliyah outpoints him. Takes the intercept mark. Top of the defensive goal square for the power. Port by 10. 17 go on final turn. Mark, and there's a difference though, isn't it? It's got to come to ground. That comes to ground at the other end. Crumb, goal. That one's just got to come to ground. Dixon reels in a one-hander from the Aaliyah kick on the wing. He hand passes to Butters, who has a bounce. Kicks over the head of Horn Francis. Out the back, Burn Jones gets through to ball and dribbles at home. Four in a row to Port Adelaide in the last. 16 points is now the margin. 
10 11 71 and the Bombers 7 13 55 18 played final term on Grandson AFL and they have turned the tables in the last quarter Port Adelaide well you caught it Paul the lead takes that mark and then kicks to the next contest but I'm not sure how it actually happens but it was Dixon yeah take the one hand arguably for a tall was unattended and then the overlap run came through the middle of the corridor as the old man butters Corbs it's uh, created the overlap tried to actually hit I think it was Horn France on the lead and then but the other forward trying to get involved get front and square the ball spilled over the back which happens a lot when it is wet and runs into an open goal Darcy Burton Jones that's what? better oh. out, of, out of the middle Phillips tried to knock it forward Got caught up, spills to Caldwell, kicks inside 50. Bergman goes crashing over the pack. Hobbs, hand pass to the skipper. Merritt jams it on the boot, reaching for it. Stringer, no mark. Good spoil from McKenzie. Hits the deck. Boat, hand pass away to Houston. Kicks Port into the middle of the ground. Narkel takes on the tackle. Hand pass ends up with Redmond, does very well. Oh, had the blinkers on. Caught from behind, holding the ball. The chase down tackle from Marshall. And Redmond never heard him coming. Marshall kicks out wide for Drew and he takes the mark 55 metres out right half forward probably a bit too early to put the cue in the rack 8 minutes to go great kick, hits up Power Pepper comes sliding through to take the sprawling mark right half forward 25 metres out just lift it haven't they, just lift it all ends of the ground, you know Lear critical one on one win, even there that spoil and uh, was it Stringer or Peter Wright? Looked like he had a bit of separation. Bring the ball to ground and then all over the ground. And, and this guy, in a lot of ways, leads that intensity, doesn't he, for them? The way he attacks the footy and the contest of the man. So, pretty impressive 10 or 15 minutes here from Port. To make it five in a row in this final term, he slides one up the side of the boot and through from behind. Ooh, behind for Park Over Time, is it? Ooh. Sort of sat on the big screen. He's 6'9 from set shots so far this year. 0-3. Uh, 0-3 zero three. Zero three with that one on the line. And one that whacked through for a 20 minutes. Rush in behind. Uh, Port by 17, approaching time on final turn. Almost from the kick in. Kick up towards Stringer at half forward. McKenzie brought it to ground. Hobbs chasing after it. Paddles it to Stringer's advantage. He collects it right half forward. Kicks into the pocket to Langford. Fist came from Bergman. And it goes out of play for a throw in. 20 metres around from the Bombers' goal. Last transition from the kick-in. Port Adelaide by 17 points as we're ticking a time on in this final quarter. Port Adelaide looking for a 12th win in a row. Essendon trying to break that streak and solidify their place in the top eight. Ball back into play. Phillips palms it down. Langford collects. Gives it off to Cordwell. The snap around the corner from the pocket is superb. And it keeps the Bombers alive. Margin is 11, Port Adelaide 10, 12, 72 to Essendon 8, 13, 61. 21 played final term on Grandson AFL. Critical, wasn't it? Critical goal. Just went, it felt like Port, who has been there all this quarter, we're going to run away with it. Just find a way to keep in touch the Bombers. Seven minutes to go. It's still going to be a tough ass, but have they got one last surge in them here we know they've got the ascendancy in the ruck again I, I like the, the the play of Andrew Phillips to to grab it try and throw it on the boot or, or give a handball off just to get that all important front half position and see if Stringer or that time it was Caldwell can get to work and, and, and do something the crowd certainly involved Cuts the lead down to 11. The Bombers with a huge centre break. Parrish kicks to centre half forward. Caldwell clean. Pick up hand pass to Hobbs. Goes back to Parrish. Sends it deep inside. 50. Langford. Leaping at it. Takes the mark. He'll have a look at them. 25 out directly in front for the Bombers. Yeah, well, it was a clearance work, wasn't it, from Phillips, your man boy. Yeah, we asked him just to go forward, but good little tap down to Darcy Parrish, and there was a number of people involved. Really good, clean pickup at 10 half forward from Perkins, I think it was, and then the young contested chain come, and a great mark from Langer just to finish the job on over the top of the Lear. Yeah, so huge, huge okay. moment. Yeah, big moment. I think Lear's okay. He did, he did cop a, he was a collateral damage in that contest. You pumped him up earlier, mate, so hopefully Tw- put the moz on him. 28 goals 
13 for the season. Their leading goal kicker, Langford. Got it. Got it. We're far from finished. These bombers will not go quietly into the night. Port Adelaide's lead cut to five. The power 10, 12, 72. Essendon keep coming. 9, 13, 67. 23 go on final turn. Oh, now we've got rain again with everything this quarter. The Seagulls arrived. Corbin didn't mention them. The rain. <laughs> Port dominated the first 20 minutes, but the bombers just through that, that centre bounce or just through the clearance dominance. Jeremy Finlayson choosing not to compete at all, and they finally got it worked out. Beautiful bit of ruck work there from Phillips down at Parrish, who followed up, got the forward entry, and a terrific mark in these conditions from Kyle Langford. Goes back and converts. Plenty of time. Six lead changes, deserves this kind of finish. Back in the middle, a big fist from Phillips, thumps it towards centre-half forward. Caldwell overran it, then turns tackle and Farrell got the hand pass out to Houston. Wax it on the boot towards the wing, and now they chase after it. Burgoyne the sub, and Heppel the other way, who wins the footy, gives it to Durham. Defensive side of the outer wing, kicks up towards half forward. A leader in a contest against Wiedemann was brilliant. And then chips it in board to Houston. Port Adelaide by five. Essendon by nine at three-quarter time. The power came out and kicked the next four. Bombers with the last two. Long kick down the line to a contest. Burgoyne collects, hand passes backwards to Williams. Kicks up towards half forward. Redmond in front position over his head. McGrath's out the back for the Bombers. But it's a free kick, is it? Coming back to Redmond. So he'll take the footy at right half back for Essen. And they trail Port by five. 25 played final term. Port three and zip in games decided under a goal. Essendon two and one. Their season record so far. Got the by five points in round eight, two. Port. It's five at the moment, 25 gone, final turn. Short kick finds McGrath as he's running down the wing. He's caught by Butters. He's caught too late. Downfield. Affected the kick, downfield free. Essendon with it. Durham draws the man on the mark. Lays it off by hand to Merritt. Kicks deep, top of the goal square. McKenzie with a shove. It's all legal. He takes Ooh. the intercept mark. <laughs> the hands were out. I think it was just in the side enough. Up by holds his nerve, doesn't get sucked in by the fans. Mackenzie to Horn Francis, marks at half back, and he can just dab it short to Marshall. Port lead it by five points. We're in the final five minutes, 25 gone, final quarter. Our bombers got to identify now that they're gone more into keepings off, so they must number off. So what I mean, everyone just go and find a man rather than playing team defence, allowing the uncontested marks. They must all find an opponent and stop those short kicks. Rosie long down the line, off hands. Heppel out the back, hand pass to Redmond, put him under pressure, he gets around Narkel. Hand passes backwards to Kelly, he thumps it down the line. Perkins in the contest, knocked away from him. Martin laying a tackle on Boak, gets the hand pass out to Drew, who then gives it to Wines. Hand passes to Narkel, two kicks from goal. His kick inside 50 is out of bounds on the full. Free kick to Essendon in the left back pocket. Kelly or McGrath is going to take it. Plenty of time still, so I don't need to take too many risks here. And with these conditions, it's an interesting challenge, isn't it? Do you, do you take the 50-50 the high risk kick or go down the line? Rain continues to fall. McGrath goes long to the wing. Wiedemann takes a juggled mark. Essendon with the footy defensive side of halfway. Port yeah, one on one ahead of the guard ground. Port lead it by five. 26 gone. Final term. Wiedemann down to half forward. String of the target. Flip. Phillips floats in front. No mark. He'll get a second play at it. Hand pass picked off. Alier on half back. Hurried handball to boat. Pushed over by Merritt. Heppel hooks a kick inside 50. Turns it over. And Williams takes the inter intercept mark. There's still over three minutes on the game clock. Port by five. 26 gone, final turn. Grandstand AFL, Port by five. Williams long to the wing. Ridley with the intercept grab. In front of the two benches. Can send the Bombers back inside 50. Kicks long. String is the target. Aaliyah from the side with a fist. Spills out the back to Williams. He gets his back to Aaliyah. Close up against the boundary line. A rush kick down the line. Narkel against Merritt. Merritt goes to ground. Narkel over the top of him. It spills out the back to Marshall. He's brought down by Hepler. By says it's a throw. They've just got to shift this ball off the line. They're getting caught in the habit now. Just bombing it inside or, 50. Or someone's going to go and stand next to Aaliyah. You can't let him run and jump by himself. Number out, even out, four to the ball. Heppel long to the pocket. 
Big fist from result? Houston out of bounds. A throw in 40 around from Essendon's goal. They trailed Port Adelaide by five. 27 and a half minutes gone. Final term on Grandson AFL. He's got the license to take more risk, but they can't get caught. Essendon are just bombing it straight back where it come from because Port Adelaide are going to have numbers there because they're in win the, oh, sorry, save the game mode where they get extra number yep. back. Boundary throw into Bombers through Parrish. Hand pass to Merritt. Kick smothered. Ricochets towards Port's goal. Half back. Rosie clever. Sockers it forward. Into the path of Kelly. Hand pass to Martin. But is desperate. Can't catch him. Martin kicks to centre half forward. Spills through to Bergman. Hand pass to Houston for Port. Kicks across the half back line in the driving rain. Bergwijn cops an unkind bounce. Redmond's oh. onto it. Kicks inside 50. Mark. Mark taken. He's got it. Paul will. And Jai Caldwell comes up with it for Essendon. Centre half forward, 35 out. Wow. He's had a good day, Jai Caldwell. Really good second half. Quite first quarter, but as the rains fall, these are his sort of condition. This will be possession number 23. And this is twice now in the last quarter. He's just found himself in the right place at the right time. Can he kick his second? Jai Caldwell to turn the lead around. The drop punt is gone. Puts the hero suit on and puts Essendon up by a point. 10-13 to 10-12. Seventh lead change of the match. And it comes with less than 90 seconds on the clock. The Bombers by a point. If you didn't, or everyone that's listening, if you didn't know who Corbin Barris was, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> Tough game to call, but outstanding finish from Caldwell considering the circumstances. And as soon as he kicked that goal, running back to the square, Essendon's gone in save the game mode. So we'll see Cole Langford as the, the, the uh, key forward roll up to a wing. He's going to try and get back straight away. So there's only 83 seconds, minute 23 left on the oh, well, again, with Phillips in charge here. The he big clearance. Control, they stop because I love that. It's a massive fist from Phillips out of the rock to Cole Willis and a half forward. The quick kick inside 50. Bounces in front of Wright in a one-on-one -on -one against Aaliyah. Gathers, hands it to Parrish. The snap towards goal is across oh, the face. It's almost like got to get out of bounds. Give him the ball back. Two yeah. points the margin to Essendon. A minute left on the clock. There's still plenty of time. McKenzie with the kick out. He's going to go long right into the middle of the G. Thumped forward by the power. L live footy at centre half forward. Burn Jones out after it. Tucks it forward. Redmond's onto it. Redmond to save oh, the day. Kicks out to the Definitely boundary line. To be One bounce out of play. Has to be. Deliberate. Butters is out onto the footy. 50 seconds left, plenty of time. Kicks inside the forward arc for Port. Martin tries to knock it to the boundary line. Ridley can't mm. collect and spills it out of play. A throw in right forward pocket for Port. Essendon by two. Redmond's been huge. That's 31 brilliant. minutes gone. 42 seconds left on the game clock. Forward 50 stoppage for the power. Corbin's heart rate's about 180 at the minute. Watch Power Pepper get on the move here. Horn Francis. Tough for the umpires here. Dixon's taking the ruck. It's probably a smart move. Gets out the back. Is that a high tackle? Oh. Corbin with the tackle. Umpire says no, it isn't. Ball is locked up. Tackle on Burn Jones. That's a stoppage. 40 out from Port Adelaide's goal. Essendon by two points. Not long left. The tap from Dixon. Is that high contact? Umpire says no. Kelly has a go. Spills to Drew. Gets the hand pass out. Oh. Martin squeezing the kick forward, but it's intercepted by Dan Houston, who's oh, marked got the 50 metres out at right half forward. 14 seconds, Jess. Well, he's, he's going to have a shot after well, the he has to now, because there's, uh, there's 35 players inside defensive 50. Tell you what, dry footy but first he, quarter. He's absolutely got the distance here, yeah, Dan Houston. Does he? But he can't. He can't. So the umpire must go, must get on the other side of Goofy and see if he runs in the The umpire's arc. going behind yeah, him. Yeah, got Hosking, yeah, experienced right umpire. Dan Houston. The club is on an 11-game record-winning streak. The kick after the siren to win. It's right to the line. The, poor the powers players are celebrating, but we're going to have a goal review to decide the game in the MCG. They think it's over. They're, they're, they're done. They're every player, bar they've, they've said. The goal has what? 
What a bad Being lesson. called. It is a win to Port Adelaide and the G. They've won it with a kick after the siren to Dan Houston. A 12-game winning streak for Port at the death against the gallant Bombers. But it is Port who win by four points. As we see, a bomber scarf just fly off the top tier. <laughs> a very late out for Port Adelaide. It meant Dante Vicentini came in for his first game for Port Adelaide. They led by five at quarter time, by six at the half before the Bombers turned the tables in the third. They led by nine points at three quarter time. In the final term, the power came out strong with the first four. The Bombers hit back with the next three, the seventh lead change of the night from a Cordwell goal before Dan Houston on the siren, 50 metres out, sent it through the big sticks to win the game for Port. They have now won 12 in a row and they're well on their way to a top two finish in the AFL. Incredible game of footy in the end decided by Houston's rocket as he kicks it from downtown at right half forward and Port Adelaide hit the front in what is the set, uh, eighth lead change in the game. The eighth lead change of the match came after the final siren. Port Adelaide do it again. As Jess said, 12 in a row. That club record win streak extends for Port Adelaide. It was a kick that fell short from Ollie Florent, which started the run. It's now a long-range goal from Dan Houston that extends it to 12. Port Adelaide by four points in the finish. There's a bit to work through out of all of that, but in a game which featured eight lead changes and a bit of mayhem at the end, the Bombers brave but ultimately falling short and Port Adelaide, as good teams do, find a way to win. They're 13-2 and two on the season. The Bombers' record worsens to 8-7. and seven. It's the power by four. Luke Ball and Brendan Goddard, what have we just witnessed here at the G? Extraordinary stuff. I mean, that, that is a magnificent... Can we just talk about the, the moment itself? And, I mean, what a star. He's, that was his 11th position for the quarter, 32 for the game. Uh, you couldn't have it in better hands. And we, we spoke throughout the night, didn't we, about some of the some of these kicks in this Port Adelaide team and, and, and you know, being a massive reason behind what is now their, you know, their, this 12 win in a row surge. And this guy, I mean, he has to be in the All-Australian team this year. I think if you talk to Ken Hinckley... He's been up. He's been doing it for for two or three years now, consistently. Dan Houston, but God, what, what, talk about taking the moment! Uh, unbelievable stuff. And look, if you talk about the last quarter, I mean, you could argue that Port made the running, they made the play, and, and and you know you could say certainly. I mean, they've ended up pinching it with that kick, but the way they played in that last quarter, five goals three to three goals two, and, and really dominated the first 20, 20 to twenty two minutes. Uh, in the end, they just find a way. And, and, and really, at the moment, there is something in common about certainly the top two teams, isn't there? Obviously, the win-loss is there, but just the way that they're able to grind and, and find a way, even when things aren't going so well, find a way to either hang around and, and then you know hang around long enough till they get their momentum back and then just own those key moments in, in, in tight games, which you know we know that there are, there are several of them. And, geez, no one's done that better than, than Dan Houston. He needed all of that. What he's kicked, he probably kicked a 55, 56, hasn't he? And uh, it's cleared the line by a foot. Unbelievable stuff. Bombers were brave. You're spot on, Corb. Bombers really brave. They looked looked gone 15 minutes into that last quarter, but just found a way through the you know Phillips's dominance in the centre bounce. 
were able to surge it forward and, and find a way to goal. The crowd got involved and they were, they were brave, no doubt about it. And in the end, it's just a, a moment. It's just come down to a moment. Moments in close games matter. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. But, uh, stat just came up on the television there. Seven of the last 12 games that they've won, Port Adelaide, they've won by under 10 points. So that's a pretty good record. So that that that's kind of uh, yeah Collingwood stuff yep. from in, back end of last year. Yeah, so. it's not a fluke. Yeah, yep, it's not so a fluke. So it's about it's system. It's about structure. It's about identifying the situation. Yes, you get help from your coaches, and in particular Kenny Hinckley, who coaches from the bench. So that that always helps. So the message gets direct to the players either on the bench or uh, to players on the ground running past. But they're able to do it under pressure, identify moments, structures, and able able to get it done because as we're well aware of bully some players and teams just don't have the ability to take it from the classroom or take it from the class to the grass as Rossi Lyon says so just the ability to get it done then under pressure <laughs> just heightens everything uh, so inability really so yeah impressive stuff by Port Adelaide finding a way but you credit credit to us and you talked about them briefly and it is about Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide and Dan Houston as it should be but just to find a way and they've lost. They're on the other end of it, aren't they, where they've, they've lost a number of games this year. I'm going to say, Corbin, you being a big ass and a man, I've obviously uh, got a yeah, soft spot for them. And they've lost two front. Two by under a goal. Two by under a goal. Well, they, There'll both be a couple they've there. Lost a port, within, they've lost a port twice yeah. by under a goal. Yep. Yeah. Under a kick. So they're at the other end of it where... Lost to Collingwood by 11... Uh, sorry, lost to Collingwood after leading at three-quarter time. Yep. Of course, they came back and got them that night. Interestingly, out of Port Adelaide streak, so these 12 games, four of them they've trailed at three-quarter time. So it probably speaks to a little bit, yep. as you so, say, Beach, about the close games they've been in. Yeah. And we might just get into the Port Adelaide rooms and soak some of this up. Karen Peterson's down there. The Port boys are making their way in. Port Adelaide by four points with an after-the-siren goal for Dan Houston. G'day, Corby. Thank you. It's, it's hard to tell how people are feeling. Everyone's almost shaking their heads as the boys are coming in at the moment. Looks like they're led by Connor Rosie and Sam Palpepper. First one in. As you can well imagine, Dan Houston is uh, being embraced by someone he knows very well. And There's kisses, there's hugs, there's cheers, there's sports drink that's about to be absolutely sprayed everywhere in these rooms. This is a very, very happy scene. Lots of hooping. Lots of staff. Lots of family. Here they go. Sports drink all over the young fellow who's made his debut tonight in the most of un unusual circumstances. Gets dragged back into the circle. This will be loud. Incredible scenes down here. Corby Port Adelaide winners by four points in the most dramatic of circumstances tonight. I'll see if I can get someone to have a chat to. Can't wait. Thanks, Kez. We'll be back there shortly for uh, some reaction from the Port Adelaide room to win by four points. I think I've lost my voice. 11 12 78. <laughs> Port Adelaide over Essendon 10 14 74. We'll do our best to steer our way to the finish. Uh, what an end to the Saturday footy. So we had four games, two of them in the afternoon slot. Adelaide by 11 goals over North. The Western Bulldogs by 29 over Fremantle. Collingwood by 78 over Gold Coast. And in the end, it was Port Adelaide by four points over Essendon in one of the most wild finishes we've seen so far this season. There were eight lead changes in the game. And in the end, Dan Houston, who took a mark, backed himself in. There were seconds ticking down. I think there was about 13, 14 seconds left when he took the mark, yep. turned his back on the goals and said, I'm going to have a ping from about 55 out, went back and kicked it. One of the most pure kicks in the game. They, yeah, they would have known because the signs come up with either a minute or 30 seconds. So I think uh, it was the cannon. McKenzie. McKenzie walked over to him, I think. He, he, being a defender too, probably saw the sign, said, mate, you've got you know, less than 30 seconds left. So obviously when you take a mark and you take a set shot, you've got the shot clock, so you know yeah. you've got your, your that, 30 seconds. So there would have been an understanding from the team. So, uh, yeah, it backed yourself in and then be able to execute. And that doesn't even remotely tell the story, that final term. So Port Adelaide started like they'd been shot out of a cannon. They trailed by nine points at three-quarter time. They kicked the first four goals of the final term, led by 17 points. 
Essendon then came back to hit the front. Caldwell gold in the final 90 seconds. The Dons thought they were home. They led by two points. So it was only a goal that would have turned the game around after the siren and Houston was good enough to go back and kick it. Just having a look at the replay too and it'll be, it'll be painful but there'll be some learnings there for the Bombers. So the quick kick comes out of the, uh, of the congested area. I mean, you could Are you 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 try, and get, try and get it close to the boundary, but Houston's standing there by himself. Peter Wright, I think it was, standing 20 metres. You've got to, you've got to, the loose has got to be far, as far back as you can. You've got every player roll up. You can't have Dan Houston standing by himself. Or get the kick wider if you, you, know, if you happen That's to always gonna be deliver it out of bound. You yeah, make yeah. it even tougher. Yeah, yeah. So, little so there's always count. learnings like that to come out of it. But they were brave. Yeah, they were. They, it looked like Port had the momentum, you know, 11 in a row, know how to win, had all the running in that last quarter. Bombers found a way to get back in front. Are you allowed to do like a rugby union? I don't even know the rule here. Mm. Like uh, scrum lift? I, that's a great question. Uh, this comes up routinely. I, I think you can, but I, you certainly can't climb the goalposts, yeah, you know, yeah, because I we know saw Dane yeah. Rampey do that, obviously. Um, I, th- I think you can. Yeah, there's no rule against it. No, the the, the line out type thing. Like yep. they have to play Has it, it on ever the been tried? Sit on the shoulders. <sighs> it's a it's a good question. You're talking about on the mark or on the goal line? The, no, on the there's, only, the there's only allowed one on the mark, yeah, so you yeah, can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Could you do it behind him? <laughs> Is that yep. the five minutes? You could. I, I'm talking on the yeah. goal line. In, in that instance, I'm serious. So, like someone crazy would have to train this. So I'm thinking, <laughs> Jocko <laughs> Williams or someone. Well, like the, that. the guy on the bottom would have to be extremely strong because oh. people could just push him yeah. over. Like, yeah, that's well, a two or three, <laughs> but at least a uh, boost. And then, t- like, uh, it sounds crazy, but that like that saves a that saves a game for us. And there, like, I'm just, I would love to see it. Get the rugby union coaches in. Teach the, teach the boys how to do it. The shots of the players on the goal line are incredible. Great so for the, yeah. the pitchers, the camera obviously on the post to judge whether it went through or not. What would you say? 15 players in shot and, and all the Bombers guys are up and they've got the big guys on the line and the Ruckman and the ball just carries over the line as there's hands on it. And in between all these bodies in this sea of humanity, you see the little goal umpire there in green <laughs> as he's sort of poking his head through on the right yeah, spot. Find space. Trying to straddle the line and he was in the box seat as well. So they'll make for excellent pitches if you can't see them at the moment. Port Adelaide win by four points in just an absolutely wild finish. Now at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, the power by four. Dan Houston kicked the winning goal after the siren. Uh, what have we? So we saw Ollie Florence kick land short. I'm trying to think after the siren games we've had so far this season. Have we had one? We obviously had a couple last year with Jamie Dawson. Elliott did it against the Bombers Jordan and then Dawson, kicked one in yep. the yeah the whiny moments against uh, the, the Blues, of course. Jordan Sydney Dawson in the showdown. Port earlier or was that close to the final? So that was Florin after the that siren that fell short. Yeah. Yep. That was from only 30 out on a good night, wasn't it? Which, uh, which started this run for Port Adelaide and, of course, uh, now they've, they've won 12 in a row. But uh, in, incredible scenes here tonight at the MCG in the wet too. That's the other thing. It, was, it rained pretty much consistently from halfway through the third quarter onwards. The Port Adelaide boys are just in for uh, a quick chat with Ken Hinckley. They're just emerging now from that, so we'll hope to get some reaction from the Port Adelaide rooms. A four-point win means they go equal top, top, top with Collingwood, so they find themselves 13-2 and two on the season. Meanwhile, for uh, Essendon, they sit just inside the top eight, but it's a, it's a huge four points that passes them by given the, the log jam that they're in in that mid-table. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a real log jam uh, from from fifth to all the right, all the way down to probably twelfth, isn't it? And yeah, you just just having a look at the ladder now. That, that would have uh, just kept them pace with the Bulldogs, who get their four points today, go to thirty six. Bombers uh, are stuck on thirty two for the time being. And that, let's not forget too at the MCG. So I think people were quick to knock them in the past, being or saying that they aren't able to perform. At the MCG, they don't play here enough. I think they may have even gone on record and saying that they want to play more to get experience. And then, so they've come here. This is their third game, and they're two and one. Richmond, Collingwood early in the year when they're in poor form, but they're two and one at the MCG this year. Let's celebrate with the winners, Port Adelaide by four points with the Dan Houston goal after the siren down to Karen Peterson. Thanks, Corby. Kane Farrell has been very good to join us after very chaotic scenes in the change rooms. Let's start at the the end. How's your heart rate? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, still very high. I, I feel a few of the boys are going to be struggling to get to sleep tonight, I reckon. Just the, the last five minutes, a bit of a blur, but the last 30 seconds was nice. What was going through your head? Dan Houston lining up outside 50, goal after the siren. What, what was lining up? What, what were you thinking? Uh, kind of quickly thought back to that Sydney game, similar spot, and then um, uh, I, I knew he had the distance and the accuracy, but um, when it got that close to the line, I was just thinking it could go either way here, but 
um, it's nice to go our way and uh, boys celebrated well with it. Let's go to three-quarter time. You're nine points down. The rain's definitely set in by this stage. Momentum ebbs and throws to the final term and, and Essendon take the lead halfway through. What is it about this team that continues to get you guys over the line in tight games? Um, yeah, it's just our belief and confidence. Like, we've been in that situation many times this year and just to keep sticking it out at our game plan, what we know, and um, we, we love going to them situations because it brings out the best in everyone's footy. So, um, no, nah, nah, we enjoy them situations and it's good to... Good to win, but not so much on the goal. It's, it's a bit nerve-wracking at times, but it's always nice to win. There was chaos just before the, the opening bounce of tonight with the laid-out lice that goes down with a knee injury. Enters the first game of Dante Vincentini. Talk us through, what, what's he like as a character and how do you think he would have handled that moment? It was pretty chaotic at the, at the start. Yeah, yeah, no, I think he handled it as well as he could have. He's a, he's a pretty relaxed guy. Um, and to come in for your first game in those circumstances, being told you're in, in the warm-up, and then you're out and then he's up in the coach's box, and then he's back in. Um, so he, he done his role tonight, done what he could um, under minimal, um, I guess, time to get ready. So, um, no, he, he's a great character. He, he's going to be around the club for a while. I'm going to throw you upstairs, our experts, Brennan Goddard and Luke Ball. OK, well done. Congratulations on the team's win, obviously, and, and your night tonight. I thought you were superb. I think probably Port supporters... Um, you know, would, would have been reasonably comfortable with the ball being in Dan Houston's hands. Although, as we called several times throughout the night, you, either by design or, or, or how it's just planned out, there's probably a handful of you that that uh, that could have handled that situation you, uh, as well. With Trent McKenzie, the original cannon, yourself, Dylan Williams, Ryan Burton. Has that just happened by design? I mean, you've got some prodigious kicks sort of set it back, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we do. And you can add Miles Bergman in there. He's, yeah. he's got a he's got a long kick on him too. So. Um, it's kind of helping out our game plan at the moment and our ball movement, having nice having guys down there that can change up the game with our kicking. you just got to get one good kick away and um, we're off to the race with Bubsy and Rosie up there. So, um, no, it's nice. We've all, we've all adapted to it, what we can do in our defensive game. I feel in the last month and a half has, has gone up another level as well. Yeah, OK, Brennan Goddard, <clears throat> well done tonight. I just may mention after the game, seven of your 12 wins have come uh, by 10 points or under. Just want to explain to the listeners just how much time and effort you guys put into. You said earlier, too, about your confidence you do have in those situations, but how much time and effort you actually put into those situations when you're in a situation where you need to win the game or other times you need to save the game when you're uh, hanging on to a lead. But how much time do you put into that in pre-season and during the season? Um, yeah, yeah, we put in put in plenty of time. Our, our game plan and our, our structures we go through um, week in, week out, always based on tight situations because... That's what the game is this year. Everyone's close games. There's not many blowout games, really, that you get to. So um, you always have to train them tight situations, winning or losing. So um, everyone's across their role and what they have to do out there. So everyone's confident in each other and believe that each other will get their role done. So um, it's going pretty well at the moment, I feel. And just what about, well, we thought Powell Pepper just in that last quarter, I know he's an impact player as such, but him coming up to the ball, blitzing through stoppages a number of times, creating contests in your forward line, and then he gave that handball off to Rose e with a great finish. But how much impact does he have for him, and do you feel the impact that he has on the ground as a player and as a teammate? Yeah, definitely. He, he drives the standards and the level of um, energy down there as, as the forwards. He's always there ripping hard or hitting bodies and just making a stand on the game. Even if he's not touching the ball, he's, he's always out there. You know he's out there and you always got belief in him. Really settled uh, back six or, or seven, isn't it, Kane? And you know, obviously a, a, a bit of commentary around the skipper in Tom Jonas not being able to force his way back in the team and, and you know, potentially at times on paper looking undersized, but you know, even Alir, some of his stuff in that last quarter. Again, just to, to you know, to save goals was superb, and and, and you know, I guess the back six as a as a team cover for each other really well to, to potentially offset any of those um, size disadvantages you might have. Yeah, you knocked it on the head at the end there. Just just our support for each other and want to come off and, and help and support each other. It, it helps out for our lack in height. So um, we've we've all got the the ground ball work and the um, contested work, but if we can come off and support and um, help each other in the air, it really goes a long way and sets up our offence on the other way. Kane, okay, it's Jess Webster here. Well done on the win. We saw a shot of Ken Hinckley on the bench as Houston was lining up for a shot on goal. Just had a really casual smile on his face. He's living his best life at the moment, but keen to know what he had to say when you guys had a quick meeting after the song. Um, no, he's been great down on the bench. He's always up and about happy. He's always trying to make you better. He knows how tough it is out there when he's down on the bench. You can feel the energy with the boys coming off. Um, after the game, he, he just kind of 
praised Dan Houston a bit, um, the, the commitment he has to the club, even over the last year and a half. His football has gone to another level, and then to have it in his hands at the end, uh, you could always trust him to at least put it pretty close, and he's put it more than close as put it in. Uh, Kane, well done tonight. It was, uh, it was a crazy night at the footy. I'm sure we won't soon forget. Appreciate your time. Nah, Barry, thanks, guys. Kane Farrell from the Port Adelaide Football Club with Karen Peterson in the rooms. The power winners by four points with a goal after the siren to Dan Houston. Really consistent player, isn't he, Kane Farrell now? He's a, I think a reasonably high draft pick. I certainly recall being part of the AOS Academy, so you know, talented junior and just took a bit of time to, to find his place in the team, sort of moved around a little bit wing forward, but yeah, that's a really settled, strong back six or seven, isn't he? Victorian boy, so... Miles Bergen, Bergman committing to, yeah. not formally, but sounding like, and yeah, why wouldn't you at the moment, wanting to, to stay? So I think he has, two years. Okay, there yep. you go. So Perfect. that's uh, made official during the week. Uh, Dan Houston, of course, the, the man of the moment. He spoke with the television broadcaster Channel 7 and Campbell Brown minutes after that crazy finish and the goal after the final siren. Here he is. Oh, Dan, talk us through that, mate. Did you know you had the league on you? I didn't actually, but I was like... Is anyone going to miss me? I'm just having a crack and I put my boot through it. Joe McKenzie told me if I miss it, he still loved me. He was friends with it. So, no, nah, it's, uh, it's a good way to finish the night. Unbelievable way to finish the night. Wet ball and all. And uh, you, you've kicked it the best part of 55 metres. Yeah, I think the wet ball start helped me sail through. But, um, yeah, it was a good win by the boys. Pretty special group that you've got at the moment. 12 wins in a row now. You've had to come from behind in the third quarter on four of those occasions. How do you keep getting it done? I'm not too sure. I think we've got a really strong connection with the group. Um, that definitely helps. And we stick together in tough moments. And, um, yeah, that's the ball went our way tonight. You're having a great season. Personally, do you think this is one of the more consistent seasons you've ever had during the All-Australian discussion? Yeah, I think it's been a like, consistent season. I always feel like I've had some, some good footy in me. Um, but I've been able to string together this year, which has been really good. How do you celebrate tonight, mate? I could imagine that was a childhood dream. Uh, I get straight in the ice bath and uh, soak it up. Good on you, mate. Well done. Congratulations. It's an interesting way to soak it up in modern times. The answer from Dan Houston. Uh, how do you celebrate that? Jump straight in the ice bath and uh-huh. soak it up. So Dan Houston kicking the winning goal after the siren. That was a pulsating final term. Port led by 17. Jai Caldwell wiped off that deficit completely when he put Essendon in front with uh, just over 80 seconds remaining in the game. And then Dan Houston slid in to take a mark off a attempted rebound 50 from Nick Martin, jammed it on the boot. Uh, skidding through to take a sprawling effort. Houston went back and pinged it after the bell from outside 50 at right half forward to make it 12 wins in a row for Port Adelaide. An incredible end here at the G. Port Adelaide by four points at full time. 11 12 78 over Essendon 10 14 74. It's huge for Port. So they now play the Gold Coast next Saturday night to try and make it 13 in a row. Meanwhile, for Essendon, now they play Adelaide next Sunday at Docklands, and isn't that Ooh, that's huge. looming to be a huge game for uh, for the Bombers? They're the big ones, aren't they? When you come up against those teams in that yeah. uh, that's that uh, similar part of the table to you, yeah, and they should take plenty of heart out of out of tonight. You know, they'll they'll review it, I'm sure, and, and there'll be stuff to improve. But just just the way that they're yeah, the way they're going about it, and you know, you you've watched them a bit more over the last couple of years. Core, but you know, when they're challenged, or certainly in the past, it seems when they've been challenged like that, they haven't provided as much resistance. Whereas this year, they've got a real, real steeliness to them, don't they? And look, the captain drives a lot of that, no doubt about it. Thought he was terrific again tonight 31 possessions, um, and just some big plays, big tackles. So he's certainly leading the way. Um, yeah, I think get a lot out of, out of the key forwards tonight. Tough night, um, no doubt. But Peter Wright still haven't played, hasn't played a heap of footy this year, we know. And uh, and Sam Wiedemann still trying to find his way in the new system, but yeah, I thought they were brave. Yeah, Mason Redmond continues his good form. Ben Hobbs, you know, had a really good night. Cordwell, so there's there's a lot to like about about the Bombers team of of this year. Are they a top eight team? Uh, well, based on current, form. yeah, they are. They on exactly on that form. Yeah, I, I think they should absolutely still be still be thinking they are, and and uh, and, and you're approaching. You know, next week against Adelaide, absolutely with that mindset, because we've certainly seen that their best is 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 very much good enough. So, yeah, I was impressed with them tonight, Beach. The Bombers, yeah, yeah no, they they they're going all right. So, um, I think I was talking to Corbin before the game just about their process and I think where they're at and they're still a youngish team and just putting the pieces together 
that hopefully, you know, I think it's well known they're after a couple of other um, personnel to help form their list and round out their list in key position posts. So, And then once they do that, and then they're continually just adding to their game plan, I think what we've seen this year offensively, they've been really strong. And I think that the defensive side of the game is a work in progress that, you know, I may say that they may address, you know, in this preseason and then build that and kind of mould this all-rounded game that they do have. So they're spoiled for choice in the minute, in particular their midfield, Darcy Parrish, you know, his contract, free agency, and then their... their um, Tassadis, is that how it pronounced? Yep, yeah. Elijah Tassadis. Yep. Yeah, and Hobbs still running around the really twos who've been injured, serious knee injury coming off that. So top, you know, for top five draft pick. Cox and Reed are the two, aren't they? The, the, Cox and the, Reed in the background. Yeah, well, but they're in the background. But are they? Look, that's a, that's what Bomber supporters be saying. So out of that three, you know, top teners, which they which they got for Danaher, really in a sense, isn't they? It's 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 Perkins, Reed, and Cox. I mean, Perkins is 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 progressing, isn't he? He's starting to. Yep. Certainly establish himself as a as a first twenty two or every week. The other two, I mean, Cox jumped out of the blocks, didn't he? And, and Reed just can't get any luck or any continuity with his body. So, so they, it's hard to judge them based it is. on interest, yeah, it right? is. So. Yeah, yeah. But just you know, right here, right now, we're not getting. There's not much return on those investments to this point. Now they're, they're key position players, so they're always going to take a little bit longer. But what are they now? Year three? Is it four? Three or four? Cool. Four for those guys. For three. Perkins, three, I think. Maybe three. three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've well, still got time, yeah. but. Last three years, they've taken five guys pick 13 or above. Or so, below, or yeah, high, yeah, or yeah, below, high yeah, picks, yeah, whichever way you look at it. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the, the five that they've got, so as you touched on, we've seen Hobbs, obviously. Yeah, so he 13. looks like a, yeah, he's, he's, he's a big tick. Yep. He's the outlier, then the other picks are top tenors. So you've got Perkins, obviously, we, we like what he brings, a little quieter. Uh, Hobbs, was, Hobbs was a top five, he just managed to slip, you know, Adrian, Adrian got a steal. I was about to say, well... <laughs> Well, the, all, all, all recruiters, mate. They're all they're all top five draft picks. They just have to slip to the well, fifteen. We... Hobbs on a lot of projections was actually meant to go top ten, and he's not really the kind of guy Essendon needs. But he's the best player on the board. So yep. I think the bombers kind of went, well, we'll take him at thirteen. Yeah, and and leadership and all that sort of stuff. And Corbell's the other one. I mean, he's only young still. He was a top yeah. ten pick, wasn't he? So or yep. certainly a first round pick to the yeah. Giants. So the, the other guys we haven't really seen as you touched on. So Sardis. Cox is injured. Reed's been injured. Is the other one who they're both top tenors. Cox coming back through. Uh, the young kind of mid the VFL, kind of medium tall defender, number eighteen, redhead. Took number him eight, last year. Number I think. eighteen. We're wearing your number. For yeah, the you Bombers. You, you sorry. No, 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 nine. Mick Hurley. He's a young defender. They got got in the works. Not Reed. No. No. There's another one. I'll get it. Okay. I'll leave, I'll leave <laughs> it. Corbin's stumped because he's an Essence supporter. He's, re- he's it, really rattled. Have we seen him play? It's later than that. No, he hasn't played a senior oh, game. Okay. He's playing VFL. Yeah. Oh, you, mate, you don't know the rest of the... Oh, besides they, the 23 that played tonight, you, do you know the other 22 players at Essence? Beige, I just do the... Just Lewis, do the Lewis, Hay- Lewis Hayes? Lewis Hayes. I just do the AFL, Beige, so I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I'm doing grandstand VFL. Lewis and, uh, Hayes. I'll come but, in. Yeah, so the point is that I, I think, yeah, so they've got some stuff working away at VFL level, like people like Corbin that actually don't take any notice of <laughs> the development that's going on there behind the scenes with a couple of uh, top 10 draft picks, a couple just outside. Uh, Hayes being one of those. So, yeah, and then they want to add a, and a few more, I guess, experienced key personnel in key posts in particular, which have been pretty uh, public about. Who's doing the votes in the ABC Footballer of the Year? Go on, Beach. What do you, to, do you want me to... No, or we do, I didn't hear... We've been working really well together. What, what did you say? Okay. <laughs> what if I give a yeah, promo like for it. the cricket? Yeah, he likes it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, we're good. I'll give a promo uh, for... Dan, Dan Houston, one vote. Zachy Merritt, two. <laughs> and Connor Rosie, <laughs> yep, three. So three what, goals. One for Houston, two for Merritt, three... For Rosie. For Rosie. With, with a couple of there's, yeah. there's a couple of special mentions. Apology to Farrell. I thought, yeah, a couple, I thought he was, was great. Say, yeah. 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 A couple of special mentions. Butters was strong again. but Butters, yeah, Farrell, Young Williams you talked about. Um, yeah, Liz, innocent marking. Uh, it was big in the last quarter, probably four-quarter effort. Uh, Red, Redmond, terrific. Redmond, yeah. you know, parish clearance work. Caldwell had a, a huge impact. Two goals, one, 24. Hobbs even. In the second half, when he spent more time around the ball and started running, I thought his ability at number, his work rate and his contest work was, was, a, was a standout. So there's some, some really strong performance across the board from both teams. So it's really pleasing, you know, based on current form. And, you know, they're, they're both teams, obviously, but Essendon in particular, they walk away with a loss, but they're in pretty strong form.
The mm, votes twice. in the ABC Football of the Year, three to Rosie, two to Merritt, one to Dan Houston, who kicked the game winner after the bell for Port Adelaide to extend their club record winning sequence to 12 games. So they get themselves to 13-2 and two on the season. Essendon now 8-7. and seven. Now the footy continues tomorrow. We've got another game back here at the G. Beach. You're on bu- double duties. So yeah, looking forward to, s- pumped. to seeing you from 12 noon tomorrow here for Grandstand AFL Sunday. I'm sure Rosie will be listening. There's, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. there's no doubt about that. Uh, you'll be joined by Mark Murphy and myself. So we'll be able to chop up a little bit more footy. And then uh, the game call between Hawthorne and Carlton follows from 1 o'clock. Uh, for those of you in the West, uh, after that, particular interest for the Eagles and the Saints. Of course, the Eagles happening to play the last game of the weekend after that 171-point defeat last uh, Saturday. So an eight-day break before taking on BJ Saints. And in between, if you're in the NT, you'll be getting the call between Melbourne and GWS and also throughout some markets in New South Wales. Now, the cricket is on tonight, of course. Uh, We've been following closely. Borley on the screens here. What do we need, need, 400? Yeah, well, apparently 125 kilometre bounces do work. Uh, the lead. On a flat pitch, I, I don't understand it. Anyway, the lead is 313. The Aussies are five down at lunch on day four. So if you want to listen to that, best thing I reckon you do is head to the ABC Listen app, click on the red cricket ball. The batter's out this morning. Kawaja for four, uh, 77, Steve Smith for 34, and Travis Head for seven. Also, the women's ashes continues in the early hours of the morning as well. So the first of the T20 games after the test match last week. Thanks to Andrea Williamson back in the studio. Thanks to Stu Birchmall, to Karen Peterson, to Luke Ball, Brendan Goddard, Jess Webster, and on behalf of myself, Corbin Middlemass. It's good night from the MCG. Absolute mayhem in the finish. The Bombers hitting the front with 90 seconds to go. The eighth lead change.